Hey everybody, sorry about the delay. How's the sound volume today? I feel like my gain's a little high. Maybe it's a little low. I don't know, how's the sound? I guess I'll wait. I don't know. I don't know if people don't give a give a crap or I don't know Max on deck is streaming tonight. Chewie's is streaming later. Maybe people don't want to watch. I don't know. There's a few people in here now. Let's see who's in here. Oh, how do I? Oh, boy three one four. Thank you for joining. And Chameleon, of course. Um. All right. I guess I'll just get started and start doing things. How is the sound? Nobody's commenting on the sound. Can you guys even hear me? All right. So, uh, today's build, I guess I'll show something off first. I want to show off the unicorn later, see if more people will be in here, they'll watch it. Today's build, now I'm dropping things already. Oh, fuck me. All right. The auto, oh, god damn it, it has the thing again? What? All right, let me try to fix it. Hang on. Is that better? Let's see if that's better. Oh, it sounds better. That sounds better to me. Okay, good. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sounds working. At least I think it's working. I don't know. Is the video quality really bad to anybody else? Let me see. Is that just my Twitch? Wow, 720p looks terrible. Is that just blurry? Dang. Oh well. All right, well, I guess we're getting started. It's kind of blurry, but. And I can't hear myself. I gotta, got my setup. So bad. All right, let's hopefully better. I can see what I'm doing. All right, so today. Close the door too. It's not so bad. Come here. Yeah, it looks like a potato, doesn't it? What the hell? I uh, just set it to 720. I don't know. Right, do we just have a potato stream today? Do I restart the stream? I don't know. Do we care more about sound or visuals? Wow, that looks terrible. And it looks great on my computer. What the what? I feel like there's always just a new problem, another day, another problem. <sighs> whatever, I'm, I'm, whatever. I'm just gonna start doing stuff, and it's fine. It's like the old, it's like old times when I was streaming off my laptop, my laptop webcam. So uh, today we have a literally one of a kind uh, keyboard build. No, is it happening again? What? What? What the fuck? Why? Actually so broken. 
actually so broken. I, I'm about to. I'm honestly about to. Holy shit. Just throw my computer, everything out the window. And end everything. Is it fixed? Jesus. Oh, let's see if that's any better. should be working. It's supposed to be working. If it's not working, honestly, if it stops working, I'm just not streaming. I'm just, I'm just not dealing with it. I don't want to fucking deal with it. I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm going to try this one. I literally didn't touch a setting and the interface switched back. Oh my God. Why is life so hard? Don't ever buy a Zoom H6 and expect to use it for an interface. Just don't ever do it. I'm trying to explain that, but it, yeah, everything sounds like shit. So, what I am supposed to be doing today, <laughs> instead of complaining about my audio interface, this is actually a really uh, kind of special build um, that I sort of on permanent loan to a friend, and uh, uh, just I, I, it needed to be rebuilt. Like the the lay, he didn't like the layout really, so it's a you know sort of somewhat compatible 60% plate and he just wanted to change things a little bit but um, you know so you can see here there's a there's a bunch of universal slots there's it supports both split and single backspace so I'm just changing the layout um, I was maybe gonna open all the switches and film them but because I just spent all that time uh, maybe 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 we'll see we'll see how, how fast everything's progressing because um, I at least just want to talk about the keyboard for a minute so I'm using it as a tray, which is probably a terrible idea. Let me get a bowl for all this stuff. Yeah, I'm using OBS. Um, it's buggy open source software and a buggy audio interface that's not really an audio interface and really shouldn't be used as an audio interface. So I'm saying don't, like it, it advertises being an audio interface as well as a field recorder, but it's, it just, it's a terrible, terrible interface. And the only reason I'm using it at all is because I thought the sound of the microphone that I have was better, but um, this isn't worth it. This this shit with the sampling rate isn't worth it. Next stream, I'm I'm just gonna use the uh, the other setup and and liter and just sell this. I hate it so much. OBS is you know, OBS is what it is. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. So there's a few funny things about this keyboard uh, that I think you guys will appreciate. Um, I was on Discord. This was like probably, I don't know when, like March maybe, where, uh, you know, I, I guess like the gasket mount thing was really popping off at the beginning of the year. You know, it was like, wow, gasket's so cool, gasket's so cool. Everyone wanted to do gasket, but it was so unavailable at the time. Um, What I realized is that, look, gasket mount ultimately is, you know, a, a keyboard with some rubber between the plate and the other components. So what I figured was I had this keyboard, um, let me gasket mount it. <laughs> and I'll talk about what that means after I just explain the keyboard. So this is something I bought on Mech Market. I believe there's only one of them in existence. It, the the seller who I guess, I guess was the guy who made it called it the maple bar because it's literally just a bar of maple <laughs> um, I guess they took a piece of nice maple wood um, and hit it you know with a I think they did this with a with a I don't know if they did it with a plunge router or they did it on a tabletop but um, I, I don't know what what would make sense here but they routed this whole thing out 
Uh, they they cut out a circle for the reset the uh, reset switch and uh, uh, cut out for the USB port. So this is the back. Obviously, it's just flat. There's no angle to it. Um, I thought about maybe drilling holes for cone feet, but eh, you know, you can just use double stick tape. And they put a nice, uh, really nice little um, threaded threaded inserts for the plate. Uh, and the plate itself, there you go. Thanks, camera. Good job. Good job. So you've got one, two, three, four. You got eight, eight plate mounting points. And the plate itself, which I showed you before, it's this really nice shiny. I don't know if they polished it or they bought it shiny. It's kind of it's got some fingerprints on it, but nice and mirror reflective. It's really really cool. This is stainless steel. You know, and normally stainless steel is very rigid and can sound very like clanky, like clank clank, and it sounds like that when you type on it too. So I um, I ended up putting silent switches in it. So, but uh, yeah, so that you know, this seemed like a fun keyboard to play around with. Um, and, but I wasn't really using it much, so I let my friend kind of borrow it, and he didn't, he didn't love some things about it, so I'm just going to tweak them for him. And uh, so you can see, this is, I guess this is effectively a bottom mount keyboard or a sandwich mount keyboard, because it's really just a, there's no top half, there's no bezel or anything, it's really just a plate that, that screws into this wood base here, um, and that's it. So it's a low profile design aesthetically, like we, you know, where the, the switches and the keys, the keycaps are exposed from the side, but... Um, you know, the, the wood case, I love wood as a case material. I think it's really, really nice. It doesn't feel like, if you put a steel plate in like a tofu, it's gonna feel real rough and rattly. Whereas in the wood case, you know, first of all, the sound is great. It's like a nice, you know, deep sort of, it really brings out the thock in the switch. And um, it's, I don't know, it's just a really, it's a really handsome handsome little thing. And it, it feels quite nice. So. I made some modifications to it in the form of some poorly cut neoprene rubber strips. <coughs> and this, and so as I was saying about gasket mount, is you know, when gasket mount was a thing, I was like, oh wow, this is a great opportunity. I have a keyboard that's a sandwich. There's no internal uh, clearances to mess with. It just, you know, raises up the plate a little bit. So what the heck, let me cut some, some rubber strips and put them between the plate and the case and the body of the keyboard. Um, now, being this, being it's a wood keyboard, there's already a bit of like a sort of dampening effect in the wood, but the wood's rigid. You know, you're not going to bottom out into. It's not going to soften your bottom out. Meanwhile, these are also very, very rigid, especially after I've, they've spent time in compression. They've sort of become permanently compressed a little bit. They might actually not be doing much of anything anymore, but they're. You can squish them a little bit, unlike the wood. So what I did is I just laid these around, which I'll, I'll do when I'm assembling it, but just so you can see, like I laid these around the edge of the case in between all the screw holes. It goes like that, I guess. So you know, some of them are narrower than others. Some of that, like they're not very well cut or anything. If I were to do this again, I would do it, you know, much, much cleaner cuts. But, uh, you know, the plate just sits on top of those. And uh, let me... You gotta do some fiddly aligning stuff, but then once you're done, you've got, you know, a kind of budget gasket mount solution. And, you know, in my testing, did it change the feel much? No, maybe a tiny bit of less like vibration throughout the whole system. Did it change the sound? Yeah, a little. I think it brought on a nicer thock a little bit. Um, I don't know if it was quieter or louder. But you'll see, we can try it both ways once I build up the keyboard. So that's what we're building. The, sorry if that was loud, the one of a kind maple bar. And just for the PCB, we are using a GH60. Um, I am going to, I think, let's see, he said he was comfortable with the layout. So I just need to fix up the bottom row. Let me see, so what was I gonna do here? I was going to, I think I'll keep it split backspace because he, he didn't have a specific layout request. He was just like, I want it to be like what's on my Mac, right? So I have to reprogram it, obviously. But he, so, you know, I'll, I'll probably, he, you know, originally he hated the backspace being there. I should probably keep, take these stabs. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. These are really nice pre-retool stabs. I'm going to take these stabs off and redo uh, 
do more stabs and give him a more traditional 60 percent ANSI layout because um oh weird i mixed clip-ins and screw-ins anyway why would i do that i guess like why wouldn't i do that right it's fine um and i actually band-aid modded this one i don't know why i don't i don't know maybe i'll maybe i'll band-aid mod the, the other stabs i don't know he'll certainly mm, maybe i'll leave it as is it needed to be rebuilt either way all right, fine. Yeah, you know what? Let's not let's not mess with stabs. Let's leave the leaf default layout that I had because he didn't hate it. But um, I'll just make sure I reprogram it at the end. He wanted it to be more like a Mac, so I'll just make sure the command key is here and you got control and alt here. Uh, as long as the command keys are close to the space bar, I think he'll be happy. Uh, and he's a, he's a programmer. He's a he's a, well, he's not a programmer professionally, but he writes code, so he'll be he'll probably be happy to have the tilde and the backslash there. He'll get used to the backspace. Escape will be up there arrow keys i'll give him a function key so i don't have to do a stab okay he'll get used to it it's fine anyway so good we don't have to do stabs now that we're not doing stabs i guess we can open switches and uh that will be kind of fun because i'm not lubing these i don't think they really honestly they don't really need to be lubed which is kind of cool um because they're silent they don't really need the lube for the sound and they're honestly pretty damn smooth like but they need films because the, the, the plastic housing rattles a lot. So uh, I'm just going to open these up, quickly film them, and put them back together. Not going to spring swap. Just just real simple mod. So hopefully we won't spend too long. Hopefully I'm, I'm aiming for I'm aiming for about two hours, I guess, all in. You know, I open switches. I can open switches fairly quickly if I'm like using my brain. All right, I got to oil the springs. I'm not going to tub loop. I'm just going to oil the springs and film, and hopefully that'll get us about two, two, two and a half hour stream. Sorry about that. So, uh, let's get started. Opening switches. I mean, I've gone on stream talking about my switch opener. This is the key boss. There are many others like it. This is mine. Therefore, I enjoy this one. Let's put these away for now. Let's see. What else am I going to need? I have to get a tub for tub lubing springs. I have to get films. Be right back. All right, all right, all right. So I think last time I did springs, I used the TX paraffin oil, and I thought I had an extra bottle of it because um, I just wanted to use it up, but I don't know where it is. So we're just going to use the old, the good old uh, silicone oil instead. I guess it, I guess it probably doesn't matter if you mix spring lubes. I'm not going to I'm not going to clean this too carefully because it's just it's all oil. I don't know, it probably doesn't matter at all if I just leave it. The other thing I really should do is uh, just check the stabs, make sure everything's in good order, probably give it a little tune-up if necessary. So I'm just going to grab some linear switches first, tune up the stabs, get the PCB ready to go, um, and then start with the uh, switch model. So I've got some good old MX Reds, which we all know and love, or probably hate if you're, you know, most people. Plate mount MX Reds too, because I'm a dumbass. 
and bought the wrong ones. I don't even know why. I, I don't know why I have these. Oh, these are plate nuts. These aren't actually gonna. These aren't gonna work. I also have a uh, a cream switch, which yeah, that's holding in place. Good. So that's not gonna rattle around on me and uh, make me think my stabs are worse than they are. help. Eh, I mean, yeah. These need, a, these need a touch up for sure. Okay, that's fine. Good thing I checked. Uh-oh, tell you how typed is live building a Satisfaction 75. Rip me. It's a bad night to stream, apparently. Well, if you guys want to stick around and watch me, you guys want to go watch Teja. I won't, I won't judge you either way. His audio quality is better and his video quality is better. <laughs> this is a real potato stream tonight. Oh yeah, there's not, there's like nothing on here. Okay, I, I did this with dielectric before, so I'm gonna do the same thing this time. And I just tossed my dielectric over here and now I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. So I'm kind of, I'm back on the old, um, hey Jax, hey TRG. Wow, you guys are watching me and not Teja. That's really something. Um, so I'm back on the old, uh, Permatex on the wire thing. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know. Like the, the 129 was cool and all, but, uh, this just seems more like, even though the 129 seemed magical at first, it, it used a ton of grease and it just, I don't know, it just seemed like I just had to just really slather it on to get a good result. Whereas this stuff, I just use a little bit and that goes a long way. Um, and it seems harder to over i don't know I, I i maybe i'm just more experienced with this and it's just it's just more comfortable to me so the way i the way i've been doing this is i will i put way too much for the nk65 yeah yeah the permatex doesn't wear out that easily so i do a little bit like a real like a basically just i like to have like a like an envelope of permatex around the wire. And then on the end, see on the, actually on the end, it's not great because it's sort of, focus, there we go. So you can see there's like a little bit of a glob kind of near the end. I want to get that actually on the tip of the plastic, the, the metal. And the reason for that is when I insert the wire, um, I, I want it to, there, if there's a blob on the tip of the metal, I want it to like slide down a little bit. And also I want as much on the tip as possible because that seems in my experience where a lot of the, the, the rattle comes from is actually right at the tip, um, which is why you can you can fix that by injecting lube in the back where the, the tip of the wire is. So I'm just gonna, I'm just, I just like to use the, the tip of the, the bottle as like a, like a tool to sort of shove the, shove the stuff around. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of has to be on there. Do the same thing. And there's actually, there's enough on it. Let me see if I can get, yeah, exactly, just the tip. Let me see if I can, oh, this angle's so different to me. Come on, okay, it really has a minimum range. Let's see if it'll focus on that. No, it, it won't, it doesn't like that. Not too bad. I'll have to take, I'll have to take like a, like a better photo and I, this is one of those things that like, yeah, I should really take photos and, uh, and like, you know, post on geek hack or something, but whatever. Anyway, so I'm just going to insert this back in. It looks like this side is just a lot less lubed in general in the housing, but this side maybe is a little more in the wire. So I'm going to, I'm going to swap them. Band-aid modded. Wow. I can't believe I did that. I guess it softens up the bottom out. It's fitting on a silent switch, right? Where that wire's been? I don't know. I didn't check. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, it's better. Ah, oh, there's still a touch. This side's good now. Is my wire bent? Eh. Okay, this side's good for sure. This side needs a little, hear that like tiny tick? That's not, 
That's what we don't want. That that like clink clink. Hello, Kamba Akuda. This side's perfect. No tick, just like the thud from the the upstroke. Shout out to the Empress G. All right. That is a little tick. That's not cool. We got to get that tick out of there because that gets. It makes your space bar clicky, which we, we really don't like that. All right. Let's pop her out again. Is that wire? Oh, yeah. This wire might be a little crooked. I actually might just throw this wire. Yeah, I'm going to throw this wire out. I'm just going to get a different one. Hold, please. A lot of these are, are bent too, but is that a 6.25? That's a 6.25. Well, if I'm doing a new stab, maybe I should switch it to 6.25 now. Let's do this. Wait, what? That's also a 6.25. Wait. Wait, those are my 6.25s. I thought these were my 7s. Did I mix up 6.25s and 7s? Jeez. What? Do I only have 6.25s left? Empress Girly G. Yo, Empress Girly G, shout out. Oh man, wow, wait, these are all 6.25. What is happening? All right, seven, seven U, seven U. We got seven U. Yes, seven U. All right. So first, we got to check to make sure it's straight. We cannot. Oh, you can't even see that. We cannot accept unstraight stabs because they rattle, and that's no good. So I just roll. I like to roll it, make sure it's level as you roll it against the table, and then also that the two ends touch the table in the same place, and that it's level when you have it flipped on both sides and that looks pretty good so now we're just going to permatex this guy back up and uh, pop it in so the same thing so what i like to do also is uh sort of squeeze the bottom like a toothpaste tube and uh, make sure that there's just kind of a nice little glob of permatex at the end and then you can dip the wire get the glob on there dip it once pull it out slowly so it has that nice little coating on it and oh man this camera Let's see, let's see, let's see. Can you see it? Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. There's just like a nice even coating on there. And that's what we want. And then I just put a little bit of extra on the end. So there's some, so there's some uh, extra, you know, if it gets shoved around when you're installing it. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Make sure the lube is at the, or the grease is at the end of the, the nozzle there. Pull out slowly, nice even coating, and then a little extra on the tip. Okay. And let's insert that guy, and hopefully that fixes the ticking issue. It's just the dark art of uh, stabilizers. It's really just there's just no, sometimes there's just no science to it. Try to avoid pressing in the middle so I don't bend it. Ah. what we want. That's what we want. Good. 
No, no ex- extraneous ticking, clicking, clacking, rattling. None of that. None of that. All right. You know what? I'm feeling confident. I'm gonna give my friend a full backspace. I'm gonna give him a full back, uh, uh, a full backspace. If I can find screws, if I can find screws for this stab, I'm giving my friend a full backspace because I think he'll want it. He he really hated it when he first tried it. I think he learned he learned to love it. He learned to live with it. But... Oh, those are. Do I have clippings? If I have clippings, I'll use those. Lazy. All right, better yet, I'm just gonna use clippings. For so many like random stab kits, this one's already been lubed. I don't know what's up with that. All right, so we got to do one stab from scratch. It's always good to make sure we remember how to do things from scratch. These are from LZ. They should be good. I trust LZ. These are definitely free retools. All they're all free retool. Don't need to mess with that right now. So I'll do that guy at the end. Let me just check the existing ones to make sure they're good. And I'm uh, I'm using a linear switch to test because um, the I mean the, the the tactile switches just make a lot of noise. So it's extra. It's just extra. It's just extra care to make sure it's working right. Whereas a linear. There, you don't you don't have as much of that metallic clicking or clacking, not clacking. It just makes less noise, so it's easier to check what's going on. All right, to use, to use a shift key. I really should use the backspace. Nah, whatever. That's in a bag somewhere. And to use are easy, but we just we just want to check. Ooh, that one's a little loose. Might have to hold the switch in place. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'll just give it a touch up. It doesn't have an issue. I don't think it's bent or anything, but it needs a touch up. Yeah. Same thing. Grease in the tip of the nozzle. Slowly in, slowly withdraw. Touch on the end. Grease in the tip of the nozzle, in and then withdraw. You know, one thing is I'm pulling out, I keep a little pressure on the back again, just to make sure that all the, the, the grease is pushed up to the front of the nozzle. And a little on the end. Okay. There you go. Come on. Come on, buddy. I feel like sometimes just putting the stab back together is the hardest part. I just feel so stupid when I'm like, I it's just, I feel so defeated by some small pieces of plastic sometimes. Oh. Hang on, hang on, what's up, what's up with that? Hmm. I think I actually overdid that. Oh wow. Okay, there must have already been a bunch of grease inside there because now that's over, over lubed. You can actually hear the permatex like ticking around in there. That's not good. Hmm. I might have to get like a Q-tip and uh, or a. Oh, do I have any more of my? Hmm. 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 Do I prefer the tube method or painting? You know, that's a good question. Um, you know, for all the, the stabs I've done in my life, I feel like I still am a novice to stabs in some way. Uh, I mean, this I feel like the tube method is what's most comfortable and consistent to me. Um, I mean, we painted with 129. It also That also worked really well. Um, I mean, I wouldn't do the tube method with 129 because I don't have a tube of 129. Conversely, I wouldn't paint Permatex because it's just so thick doesn't like I can't imagine it would work well with a paintbrush although I never actually tried it so I guess I, I it's a, really a question of do I prefer per permatex or or 
uh, something like 129 or 205 grade zero. And I certainly don't like the 205 grade zero. I feel like you have to use a ton of it to get a good result. The 129 versus the permatex, Jerry's out. I haven't used the 129 enough. That's much better. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice now. Again, you know, no metallic. Just up and down with the switch. We want the switch. To, we want these to feel and sound the same as all the other switches. Although this is a, this this stab's a little heavy, I think. Let me see. Yeah. All right. This one's a little over lubed. I probably painted these housings. I might have to just smash on this a lot, but. Let me see, actually, is there lube? Oh yeah, there's lube on the housings and stuff. I could probably paint that up. In fact, I, I could probably, oh, the stab also is not screwed in all the way. That, that will help. Yeah, it depends on the lube. Um, I don't know, if I had a tube of Crystal Lube 129, I'd probably do it this way. So, I, so, so in a vacuum, if I could use the same method for all lubes, yes, I prefer the tube dip method to painting um, just because it's just, I, I, I don't know, I feel like it's just, it's, it works fine and it's a little faster and I don't have to use a separate paintbrush. Um, you know, obviously you're going to paint the housings if you're going to paint the housings or you're not going to paint the housings if you don't care about painting the housings, like I don't really care anymore. I think it's not overkill and sometimes it's deleterious to the switch feel, so. Yeah, you know. Hmm. Damn it. Oh, there it is. Oh, face reveal. Uh-oh. Doxed. Everybody knows me. Stop me on the street and say, oh, Salt Rock, I love your stream. Yeah, it sounds nice. It's a little sluggish. I What I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna disassemble this. I'll probably have to relube that. Um, I'm going to disassemble this guy and uh, uh, just kind of go over it with some of these Kim wipes just to uh, you know clean off some of the excess lube that's in there because I think there was there's excess lube. Wire needed more lube, but there's just a bunch of lube in the housing right now. And it just needs to go. I also need to put washers on here anyway, because the uh, screws are probably going to what? The, oh, there's no there's no wire. The screws are probably going to short a pin at some point. Oh yeah yeah yeah. These are painted. Oh god, I probably painted these with super lube. Maybe not. I don't know. There's a lot of ugh, ugh, ugh. These need these need just to be cleaned up. Science brand. Lint, the, the reason I like these in particular is they're lint free. So I don't have to worry about getting, uh, I mean, there's you know, a little bit of lint, but it's like a lot less than a paper towel, for example. They're just as absorbent. And so you don't have to worry about like hair and, and dust getting in your switches or you don't have to like clean stuff out meticulously every time you use it. So here's a, here's a dumb trick. <laughs> Wrap it on the end of your screwdriver and just kind of smash it around the, uh, the inside a little bit. that will help get your delicate task wiper, Kim White brand delicate task wiper up in the corners. I can, honestly, I kind of want to watch Teha build the Satisfaction 75. <laughs> I mean, I own one, but I want to see what he's building it with. Probably like not, all, it's probably like some weird terms of service thing where you're not like not allowed to watch somebody else's stream while you're streaming. It'd be kind of funny to just put Teha up in the background, <laughs> like in like a picture in picture. Let's see. All right. I guess, you know, I don't know if anybody who's watching, I guess I could look at the list. Who is watching right now? All right. So you guys are keyboard people. But for posterity, I'll just go over it. So a stabilizer. The, the slider has, oh my God, all right, screw it. You know what, 
If anyone's curious about stabilizers, PM me. I have a lot of stabilizer tutorial videos. I'm just putting these back together. That's what I've realized. You know, the educational density of a stream can only be so high because it's a tra it's a trade off between the amount of time you spend trying to get things to look good, trying to get things to be really helpful, and like actually getting to the content that the more experienced keyboard people are interested in. And I feel like it's hard, it's really hard to do both in one stream. Um, and so I feel like for this, you know, for my content that I'm producing, for the small audience that I have, I've had, you know, there's a decent amount of people that are interested in my stream. I have people, you know, I have subscribers on YouTube and stuff. But uh, I feel like the educational content really belongs in more prepared content, whether they're, they're photo, photo guides or, um, uh, you know, tutorial videos with specific camera angles that are meant to, you know, oh, I forgot, I have to do the washers. See, that one doesn't need a washer. I'll do it in both of them anyway. You know, it just, it just, um, the stream, the stream format is really hard when you drop screws on your floor. Oh my God. Heck. There it is. Use my, uh, I should use my screw hauler, shouldn't I? The stream format's really hard for, unless you have like a really nice camera, which I don't, unfortunately. This camera kills me. It's better than the laptop, but it's just not that good. Let me get my washers. These are fiber, nylon, fiberglass washers. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon in a 1600 pack. I didn't need 1600, so I just bought them from somebody that shipped them to me. Okay. So grab a screw. Okay, thanks magnetism. Put a washer on the screw. Put the screw back on the stabilizer, which is not in the board. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's one. And we do the second one. The boring part. Is anybody looking forward to anything interesting? Building anything interesting currently? Or just me? And tail. And I think Mechs on Deck's doing a build later, and Chubies is doing a build later, so I'll certainly have my choice of people to raid. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Great. On to the next one. Assume this will need a tune up as well, and this one is a clip in, so it won't need washers. Yeah, it needs a touch up too. Oh yeah, there's barely anything on there. You know, I oh, all right. This is a clip in, so I'll just easily pop it out, uh, clean off, clean it off, do it again. Cause I don't want this to go into get sluggish either. Oh yeah, there's oh, there's plenty of lube on there. Oh, your matrix got delivered. Which matrix? 1.20G or like one of those like crazy able variants. I know what you, I, I'm asking for the sake of the stream. I know you got a Matrix Noah. It's very exciting. Um, not just Gatterons, you want inks. That's what you want. Cause yeah, you were talking about, you really want that nice, like lower pitched sort of, or sort of like creamy, like kind of sound, right? That's inks are, yeah, inks are the, are the best. Are your best option for that for sure inks with thick grease and films yeah I'm super excited to see the Noah 
you know, I, I don't love the crazy styling that he does on 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 that board and many of his other boards, but a lot of people do like it, and it's certainly fun. You know, it's like you're having fun with your keyboard. It's not like a serious chunk of aluminum. My keyboard is very serious. I type on it. I do serious person things on my keyboard. Like, yeah, you know, some people just have fun. I like a serious person keyboard. You know, I like to be very boring. But that's just what I like. I'm not going to, like, bash other people for liking it. I just personally isn't doesn't seem for me. All right. Snap together. Clip it in. I'm just switching to clip-ins. They're just so much easier. Don't be an animal and just rip it out, and you're not going to worry about popping out a wire or popping out your stab. Why is this not seated right? Why is the switch not going in all the way? Clipped. Oh. I had the, uh, the wire was underneath the... Uh, was underneath, uh, get in there, get in there. All right, there we go. Ooh, oh, that needs help. That needs help still. That's what I was afraid of. All right, round two. Withdraw and I guess yeah I guess I'm slowly withdrawing and squeezing at the same time. There's maybe a little bit of a technique to it. It's hard, you know it's harder to insert. Oh that one went well perfect. That one went very easily. Clip and clip. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. Be sure to put your switches in the right way for maximum effect. If they're backwards, they don't go in. Huh, this one's actually not good at all. I'm, I might just swap sta stabs actually. Swapping the wire. I've never seen, I've actually never had so much of an issue with a 2U stab before. Is, this, is it possible that it's bent? Let's try a different wire. It's not bent, but like. I don't know. Let's try again. The end. Let's draw slowly. My shroud on it. And a little on the end like that. Okay. You know, I guess here's an advantage of actually painting it. Is, um, you know, you can, you can, it's, I guess it requires less finesse. I don't know, is the clip in? Oh, I have a band-aid under there. I don't think that'll, that'll affect it. Heck. Okay, one side's good. This side's good. Yeah. Eh, I mean. That's not okay. We don't like that. Watching Lou draw. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This is like the extremely boring part. You know, I I don't love doing straight up build streams, to be honest. I think I prefer where I'm like playing around with switches and, and trying different things and talking about different things. I don't, you know, when I started doing keyboard stuff, I, uh, actually specifically didn't want to just do build streams but see I just have a lot of keyboards to build so I've been building them but uh, I, I'll probably honestly just do fewer builds at least fewer solo builds you know if I have a friend with me or something I'll do a build with them but uh, I think I would rather do more what is up with this is it the housing Oh, you know what's, a, yeah, interesting. 
So the left housing does not have a firm grip on the switch or on the, oh, weird, weird. So here's actually a problem I've never encountered before is the left housing, the wire is like loose in the housing, whereas there's a really tight grip on the other side. Um, let me see, I don't know if you feel it. It's like such a subtle effect. It's like, nah, you can probably hear it. Hear that? That's the wire kicking around in the clip, in the, in the housing, whereas on this side, that does it a little bit. Okay, they both do it. Then why? This one looked like it was doing it so much more. All right, let me try one more. Let me just try a different stab housing, just to see. Just to see. Oh, I got to clip this one. Oh, I'm glad you're entertained. Oh, Chameleon, you were asking some questions. Oh, yeah, you got the Polycarb Key 65. That's going to be sweet. That is such a cool looking keyboard with the mar with the uh, marshmallow switches. It's going to be a really nice build. Those are, if you know, if uh, that factory, JWK, who makes the Duroc switches, they make marshmallows. If they're, you know, if they're able to do what they did with alpaca switches, you know, consistently, they're really on top. I mean, you know, whatever unethical business they were involved with when they first showed up in the keyboard scene, you know, uh, they're producing a solid product at a good price. Um, and honestly, I mean, everyone's doing unethical things in the background anyway. So it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to imagine that like the vendors I know are saints and everybody else is evil. Um, I certainly, it certainly isn't good. A betting fraud, but they didn't really commit the fraud. I mean, it's like, you know, do you blame the factory for, for selling something fraudulent or do you blame the person that's out there actually commissioning the fraudulent object and then selling it? Now, we don't know who commissioned them, but certainly multiple people had a, a hand in selling them. And I think I just I'm just very hesitant to blame, you know, like a plastics manufacturer in China for somebody else's unethical decisions. What the hell? All right. The only other thing is that. What? Do I just live with a rattly stab? What? It's gonna drive me crazy. Hold the switch down. Okay, okay, okay. That's fixed. I had to swap out the housing. Ooh. Okay. Okay, we're fixed. Because the uh, when the switch isn't soldered in, the other thing that can happen is the switch can kind of bounce around a little bit in the PCB, and that can sound like the stab isn't looped correctly. But we got it. We have some leftover parts, I guess. I'll just put these in a bowl and worry about them later. Because I don't. I don't know. These are bad. Like at least one of these parts is bad. Do I just throw it out? Do I throw two dollars in the garbage? I think I do. Okay. Goodbye. I so rarely throw out keyboard things. That was very satisfying. Okay. Well, so much for my uh, backspace. I guess we're doing split backspace after all. I'm not doing another step. Enough of that. Put this guy away. Empress G has arrived. I'm glad you guys are entertained. I feel, I mean, you guys aren't, I don't even know whether to do educational content for you because I know um, at least some of you have never seen any of this before, so. But uh, welcome, welcome to the stream. I don't need the flush cutters at all anymore, so those go away. I still need to open switches. Oh boy, I have a lot of work to do. Tell me what you're okay. The stream about an hour. All right, let's see if I can. Let's see if I can open all these switches, film them, and put them back together in about an hour and a half. Let's see if I can do that. I think I can do it. Oh, I didn't pull up the films. Give me a second.
You know, there's somebody that actually I wanted to make sure saw this. Okay. All right, all right, all right. We got a lot of color choices today for something extremely irrelevant. Like, it so doesn't matter at all. No one's ever going to see it. But we have color choices. Oh. Ooh. Maybe the world wants me to use yellow ones because that's just what's spilled. Yeah. <laughs> 802 finished <laughs> keeping track. <laughs> just, just leave at 802. I'm done. I'm fucking done. I've not had enough of this. All right. So aesthetic choices. I've got clear switches with blue sliders. They're really pretty. Nice. Right. We have a lot of clear. We have white. We have black. We have teal. Yellow is kind of a gaudy look. Purple. We can do clear just to maximize the amount of. Let's do clear. Let's do clear films. Clear, clear, clear. Everything's clear. Okay, so, keyboard switch. Can you alternate clear and purple? <laughs> um, I could. That's a lot more work. Um, partly because if, um, it's just more, it's just a lot more work. I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> Because then I have to have like two separate piles, and when I'm putting it into the board, I have to like. <laughs> That's, that'd be funny. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm sorry. So let's get this out of the way. I'm just gonna do one for demonstration, and then uh, do the rest by in bulk. So this needs to be oiled. Let's just put a drop on it. Actually, there's some oil left in there. Yeah, I know. I've actually never, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone doing that. I think people typically buy, you know, a ba like a bag of films and they just use it. I'm, and unlike me, and they hoard them. I've never even thought to do that. Tweezers. It would be original. No, I don't know if Susie's here. I don't know anyone's Twitch usernames. It looks like I have a pretty low viewer count right now. Um, normally I have like 10, but it might just be literally you two and my other friend because there's at least one other high profile keyboard person streaming right now and their stream is a lot better quality than mine. It says three viewers. <laughs> Let's see who's actually in here. Let's see who's here. Yeah, it's literally just like my friends. Wait, oh, there's more than three viewers. OBS, you're lying to me. Anyway, I imagine most people are off watching uh, a much more high profile keyboard streamer, so. I understand why tonight is a more small, intimate gathering. Wow, these films are really clear. This is going to be really hard to see. <laughs> oh my god, these are extremely clear. Okay. <laughs> I can't show you. There's nothing to show. It's it's uh, Teha Types, yes. That is the other, that is the other streamer. And he's, he makes good content, honestly. I uh, If I knew he was streaming tonight, I would not have streamed um <laughs> if i didn't have purple <laughs> that's true that is true um but that would that would be that would delay the uh stream ending and uh, i'm trying to keep it trying to keep it somewhat short oh yeah that makes a significant difference right off the bat i'll slap these in a plate just so we can hear so I guess for the benefit of the people that aren't keyboard people here, but now I know there's a few of them. Uh, a switch. It's a it's a you know a two piece plastic housing, and then there's like a little plastic spring that goes up and down, or there's a plastic there's a plastic slider that goes up and down, sitting on top of a spring, and it and there's like switch metal contacts that open and close and make electrical connections, and that's what the keyboard knows a key was pressed. Um, 
the re the films sit between the two halves of the plastic housing. Oh, that's the way. I got to get it right up into my hand. So there's these two halves of the plastic housing that are held together by like these like teeth. And the film sits between them, the two halves, basically filling any space and preventing the two. There's a, there's a little bit of play. Like these teeth are never a perfect tight fit. So there's always a little bit of wiggle space. Oh, there we go. It's always a little bit of wiggle that can happen in this top. And the film just prevents that wiggle. And the reason why we want to prevent the wiggle is it improves both the feel and the sound. So here's the filmed one, here's the not filmed one. If I could, I mean, I could tell it blind. Even with headphones on, I know which one's filmed right away. So visually, let's see if it will work. Oh yeah. So there's actually a couple things that go on. The film, first of all, uh, makes the switch a tiny bit wider. So that helps it sit in the plate more tightly. Although in this case, it's not an issue. No, this is, this is a bit, this is a universal cutout, so it's not gonna matter. But, um, oh yeah, this is a, I mean, this is a crazy hobby. This is like, you're, you're deep, you're deep, deep in there. This is not beginner stuff. But if you wanna build your own custom keyboard and you want it to be like, I don't know. This is this is like the works. This is the other. I mean, really, if you want to go crazy, you'd be lubing or greasing all the switches. But uh, this is about as this is about as intense as it gets. So the difference in feel is not really much in these switches, honestly. Like the film, I think makes the tactile bump in the switch because there's a. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. It's beginner class today. Will this work? Please, camera. Okay. So there's... Uh, 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 you tried. There's like a bump on the... Over here. It's, it's blurry again. Oh, hey, Jesse. Welcome. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. You can see it. There's like a bump in the leg. That rides over a metal spring, basically, and that, that adds like a feeling of resistance against your finger. Um, and if you, you know, think about like a regular office keyboard and how there's like a thump, da -dum, da -dum. it's like a, a bump that you have to press through to, to, to actuate the, the, the key, it's the same on these. And so what the film does for the bump is it, it makes it a little, a little stronger and a little crisper. So here's the filmed one, unfilmed one. It just... It feels like there's more there. It feels like it's just a, it's like, it's like the difference between like if you're at the gym, oh, there's no build command. Uh, I'm sorry. All right, let me finish my, my explanation and then I'll, I'll show you what the build is. There's, it's like if you're at the gym and you're wearing like floppy gym shorts versus you're wearing like nice athletic pants and they sort kind of like, you feel like held better. It's the same way. It feels like there's something holding the switch together. Whereas here it's like, I'm pressing it, but then if you feel, kind of feel it moving under your finger and it just feels a little less coherent. And the sound changes as well. Now these are silent. There's actually rubber dampening material inside each switch to prevent it from sounding super clacky. Like, uh, let's see, what sounds clacky? Right. Let's see. These aren't gonna sound like that because there's that dampening material in there. But, it does change the sound a little bit. Some people like clicky keyboards, true. That's the filmed one. Here's the unfilmed one. Oh, you can't hear the difference on camera. Yeah, okay, there you go. The filmed one has like a more Yeah, you hear like just kind of less resonance and more of the plasticky stuff happening with the unfilmed one. Got to get away from the proximity effect here. With the filmed one, there's a nice thunk. And that's great. We want that thunk. Everybody likes a good thunk. 
So, for the benefit of Jesse, who asked, uh, that's polished stainless steel. Very nice. This is a, excuse me, <coughs> a custom wood keyboard case that I got off Mech Market. This is one of one in existence. The maker of it called it the maple bar because it's a chunk of maple. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a great thing. Nice nice resonant wood uh stainless steel plate sits on top like this. Yeah, good stuff. What was in the red keyboard? This is the uh unicorn it is red. It's more orange on camera, but it is uh, it is red. Um, this is made by a collaboration between Singa keyboards and TGR keyboards. It's a beautiful, sexy brass weight in the back, with some minor flaws. There's actually um, a streak of uh, whatever. I think this is PVD. I'm not sure. There's some. There's like a finish flaw, but. Uh, this has tangerines in it which are um, uh, Gateron linears, just from a really good batch of Gateron linears. No, I'm not gonna paint the wood. It's been finished. It has some kind of, um, it's got some kind of like stain on it, some kind of light stain that, uh, I guess it brings out the wood grain, makes it a little darker, protects it. I don't know if I need, I, I don't think I need to oil it or anything. It, it seems pretty good. I could paint it, but uh, I, I sort of like the natural look. <coughs> so I'll keep, I'll keep it as is, unless my friend wants to paint it or something, or if I sell it. Maybe somebody else will paint it. It's just so pretty. Why would I paint it, you know? Uh, do I like chunky keyboards? You know, I feel like a lot of the good keyboards are chunky. I I don't actually love super, like, thick slab -o metal look necessarily. I bought it because it was unusual. Um, I wanted a wood keyboard. I got a wood keyboard. Um, and it was a great purchase, you know. I... As long as it doesn't take up too much space on my desk, I'm happy. I don't love like wildly inefficiently large keyboards, like the Exent, for example, uh, which is just deliberately gratuitous. <coughs> but uh, eh, that's probably more takes up more space for how useful it is than I normally would get. Normally, if it, I like the smallest keyboard. <coughs> possible <coughs> for the amount of keyboard I have. Doesn't mean I only use tiny keyboards. I used to use a lot of tiny keyboards. They're all unbuilt and I haven't used them in a long time, but you know, um, eh, you know, once in a while, go big. So now see if I can tell which one's filmed because I forgot. Yeah, I don't know what's up. I, it just started. It's like a, like a tickle in my throat. All right. This one's definitely been filmed. Let's confirm. Let's see how right or wrong I am. Yep, that's got a film in it. Okay, good. So now I need a place to deposit the assembled. Actually, hold on. What do I have to do here? I have to disassemble them all. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I have to disassemble the switches, put the springs in here with a bunch of the oil, uh, shake it all up, put films in the switches, and then reassemble. So normally, I do this in a bowl. Do I use a lube station because that makes it easier to install the films? No, I'm not doing that because I gotta set it up and put them all in and it's a waste of my time. Okay, this one is one just completed switch I'm gonna put over here. Thanks, young king. Need to try tub looping. Yeah, it's it's the, it's the way, man. I I just it's like why why wouldn't you? You know, for linears especially, like just just do it. Like who cares? Like who cares if you're like, oh, I didn't spend hours. But I mean, yes. With grease, uh, uh, two hundred five grade zero, three two hundred four. I've gotten 
not so great results tub looping with 3204 and I have not even attempted to um, I've not even attempted to tub loop with 205 grade zero it probably wouldn't work but uh, with oil low viscosity oil in particular VPF 1514 super lube oil uh, Crytox GPL anything up to 104 up to and including 104 Tub lube, go ahead, sure. 105, eh. You know, you might not get good coverage. You're gonna use a lot. You're probably gonna use a lot more than required in order to get good coverage. P204, it works. I would probably just brush lube. But uh, springs, just tough. Like, like there's an absolutely no reason to do springs any other way. Now, maybe you, you find it easier to just brush it on, then fine. If you have a bit and you roll it, that's fine. But, oh, I have water, hell yeah. But, uh, you know, I think this is the easiest and most efficient way for me to do springs. And it does tend to produce a pretty good result. And yeah, exactly. You know, when you've got a lot of builds, you sort of are less attached to each one. Um, whether you're building them for a customer, which I'm not, or you're building them for yourself, which I am. It's just, uh, sometimes you don't care that much. Sometimes you care a lot. You know, expensive, fancy, high-end keyboard. What in the world? What? What in the world? Zeal, what do you, hold on a minute. Hang on a minute. Interesting update. Can you get springs that go boing? Honestly, these go boing. There's a little bit of a boing there. <laughs> uh, you, my friend, want a beam spring. Here, let me let me get you. Uh, I just need to check something. Hang on. No, I thought for a minute that these were, um, I thought for a minute these were the Stelios, the legendary Stelios, but uh, no, they're authentic Stelios. However, what Zeal did do, did evidently do, yeah, beam spring and buckling spring will definitely boing on you for sure. And uh, the uh, uh, the Apple M0110 will, it's like a chorus of pinging, and same with, same with the uh, IBM Hell, it's called the IBM Ping Master because it pings so bad. Oh, Zeal. God, dude. What a vendor, man. All right. Let me let me open one more and, and see if I'm just confused or or what. Maybe I'm mixed. Maybe I mixed up switches from different rounds or something. That's so weird. I'll tell you guys what I'm looking at in a second. Yeah. So, Zeal used two different kinds of springs. <laughs> so these I, I checked what these are. These are round 10 Xylent V1s, which I think Xylent V1s are still some of my favorite switches that have ever been made. 67 gram Xylent V1s, these feel incredible. They don't need lube. I, I, I love those switches. I really, really like them. Funny though, <laughs> Zeal, uh, these are all oiled, let me see used two different kinds of springs in the same switch. Well, maybe Zeal did, but Gateron certainly did, who manufactures them. Those are two very different springs. These all came from the same batch of 67 gram Xylets. That's pretty funny. Maybe, you know, maybe I had some round 11 ones uh, and I threw some in the bag 
and maybe they, they revise the spring slightly between rounds. I would be shocked if, uh, I mean, maybe not. I mean, Cherry apparently used to just, t you know, the, the, in the back in the day, apparently, they would just take blacks, you know, MX blacks from like multiple different factories, dump them all in the bin and then stick them, or Wise would do this with their Wise keep with, the, with their terminal keyboards, which is why harvesting vintage Cherry switches is such a crapshoot. One reason why, anyway. So... <laughs> More zeal stuff, man. I just, I, I love. See, this is why I like my stream. Not to be selfish, but like, I feel like no one else is gonna, no one else is gonna do this. Nobody else is gonna do this for you. Nobody else is gonna be like, I, I don't know. It doesn't change anything, but it just, it's interesting to me that, huh? He used two different kinds of springs. Your Gateron used two different kinds of springs. Evidently. You know, if there's only two in here, it's possible they're from, their, from a different round. But then that's also interesting that, huh, they're changing springs between rounds. Yeah, these are all the tighter kind. Maybe I only have those two. Let's see, should I do this? I'll do this on the table. Do it in my hand. Nope, that's the big kind. <laughs> oh, man. That's really cool. See, this is why I'm not super afraid of doing this kind of stuff on stream because there's always something, something comes up. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate the confidence. You know, again, if I didn't like my content, I wouldn't make it. Um, it's that simple, right? I, I make content that I would like to see. In fact, I started streaming because um, I was a little frustrated with the, the keyboard content creator at the time, and still am to some extent. Not frustrated, you know. They're making the content they want to see. Uh, there was a slightly different kind of content that I wanted to see. You know, a bit more technical, a bit more what I'm doing, what I'm doing, and why I'm doing it. Which you know, again, on a stream format is hard because you're streaming regularly. You've explained it once, you've explained it twice, twice you've explained it a hundred times. But you know, I feel like that's it's. Uh, it's like having a talk show. You have the same segment on every show or something like that. It's it's never quite the same. And there's always somebody new tuning in. But again, this is where I was going back to before about the, the educational prepared content is where, you know, there's certain things I feel like I can just do better not on stream. Or that would be better in addition, you know, as a supplement to the stream. But, you know, we, we, we take the moments to look at these sorts of things live because then, you know, we get my honest reactions. It's fun. You accompany me on the journey. I knock stuff over and curse loudly all the time. <laughs> oh, what is this guy? What is happening to me right now? I have to get up and get some more water. It's funny, I, never, I don't think I've ever been nervous on stream. There was a couple times when something just wasn't working right, and I was like, oh my god, it's actually not working. I have no content. But then I fixed it or made it part of the show. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. It's all part of the show. Like, you know, there's a lot of jokes about, oh, my stream is scuffed, my stream's lower quality than other people's. But you know what? It's like, I feel like it's more natural. I want to feel like I'm in the room. You know, like you're here hanging out with me and we're hanging out and doing keyboard stuff. You know, and if there's banter, then fine. But I don't want to, I also don't want to waste time bantering. I'm looking at, I'm trying to, I mean, you know, I don't have a lot of followers, so chat doesn't move too fast. But uh, that makes it easy because then we can talk while I'm working and I don't have to stop and like scroll up and read chat. That's nice too. More intimate vibe. More intimate vibe. You know, and I also do things like, you know, people lube keyboards on stream, not too often. I think Apiary Keyboards uh, is the only one who's really bold enough to, to do like full on lube streams. I did one, it took forever. So I probably won't, probably won't do like a full on brush lube stream again. I've done, I've done tub lubing streams before. I am the URU has done tub lubing streams before. a hundred percent better than all the other keyboard making streams what have you seen because i feel like i'm certainly maybe maybe not the worst anymore but uh 
definitely, I mean, you know, uh, who's made, I mean, again, main keyboards right now. Uh, Teo types, next on deck does keyboard builds. J over at Top Clack does keyboard builds. Um, I am a URU, Max F. Uh, Chubies, Keone, Apiary keyboards, um, those they all do build streams regularly, and I feel like maybe my stuff is on par with Keone. I haven't watched Chubies in a long time. I don't know what his setup is like. I keep missing him. I think he's streaming tonight, actually. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I am um, just just making do with what I got. I got I you know I bought a bunch of expensive audio toys, and I don't like how they sound. So we're back to my old setup. You know, that's how it is. That would be fun, an audio science stream. I don't know how to do like sound distortion testing or anything like that. Gladly watch them move build for hours. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I hope to be entertaining and cool. You know, it, it, like if you want to put me on the background and go make dinner, mission accomplished. You know, I'm providing content, entertainment. And taking care of keyboard chores that I need to do. So to answer that question, uh, is am I building for personal use? I'm building this for a friend. This is my own personal keyboard that is on indefinite loan to my friend. And uh, he needed it rebuilt because, um, well, originally we were going to change the layout. He came around and said he's fine with the layout as long as I reprogram the PCB, which I'm happy to do for him. And, uh, let me see. Um, but, but I decided to take the opportunity to put films in these switches. It's gonna make them feel and sound a lot more coherent, a lot more consistent, a lot more pleasant. It'll be a more premium typing experience with a minimum of effort. I don't want to tub loop these because it will affect the tactility. I don't want this to be a super soft kind of feeling. Key. It's already so soft because of the damn thing material. Uh, I'm not returning it yet. Uh, um, also, I, I bought a lot of it secondhand. So honestly, most of it I will just throw back up on uh, Reverb.com. Um, you know, I bought a very nice microphone. Also, I, I'm getting opinions from people too. Like, I, I don't have any post production going right now. I'm not running this through a DAW. I'm literally just running this straight in OBS, which is the streaming software. Uh, so, you know, there's no no EQ, there's no compression, none of that stuff. So, this is just raw the microphone. And what I really like about it is it's in stereo. And uh, the other microphone's mono. I think the stereo feels much more organic and natural to listen to. Um, on good speakers and headphones, and on a phone, it basically sounds the same. Maybe it's a little less good on a phone or something, if you're listening on tiny crappy speakers like a laptop or a phone or something like that. But, you know, I'll, I'll sleep on it. I don't wanna just say I don't like it and just throw it out right away. I did a side-by-side -side sound test. Um, I can, you know, I might even be, I, if I can figure it out in OBS, I might actually play the sound test for, for you guys. Uh, I had like, I had like, my, my other microphone here and the mic here, and I, I had doing the same typing test with two microphones. So, uh, you know, for comparing which microphone sounded better in as equal conditions as I could possibly get. And the results were surprising, although on headphones, I really like the stereo a lot better, but that's, I think, because the headphones are right up against your head and you get a more, the stereo effect is much more pronounced. The sound stage, as they call it. <laughs> all right, we're done. That took not too much time at all. Frickin' texting me. What the heck? Yeah, what's going on? What is all this? Oh man, we've got another stream coming up. All right, all right, all right. Let me, let me get, to, get on with the build. So, tub looping springs. Uh, I can't believe there are two different kinds of springs in here. Oh my God. They're just, they're just mixed. It's like 50-50. It's just, it's, this is just... I guess they feel the same enough 
the same that I didn't really notice a wild inconsistency in the springs. That's really funny. Anyway, tub looping springs is really easy. Hey, how's it going? Dark King Silver. Let me turn my monitor. I can actually see. Ah. That's what you got. Nice chin. Mm, really nice chin. Does my stream still look like a potato? Wow. That looks terrible. You know, I switched to 720 because I wanted the 60 frames per second. But that looks like actual ass and I don't want my stream to look like ass I will have to experiment with these res like input canvas output resolutions um, because yeah. let, let me see what happens let me see what happens just just out of curiosity I'm putting it right back, don't worry. Now it still looks like crap even when it's small. I, I must have done something with the resolution. I don't know, I have to figure it out. I don't know anything about streaming technology. How's the molder? Ooh, the, uh, yeah, it's just, there's nothing I, I don't know why it's blurry. Maybe it's the webcam. Is there like something on the webcam? Maybe there's a fingerprint on the webcam the whole time. But it looks really crisp in my little viewer. Now, that's Twitch, because my viewer, it looks great on, on my uh, my little thing. Weird. I gotta play around with that more. The molder, oh, the, 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 uh, the, the like, Sakura pink one, right? That's, uh, it's pretty. I don't have it on a board right now, but it's, uh, it's pretty. I like it. It's very, very pink. I can, I can bust out some artisans later, but I don't want to take too long. Uh, we can look at some artisans later. Anyway. Tub lubing springs. Very, very easy. I like to call it shake lubing in case you have to use a bag. It's clear for you. Are you watching on your phone? That's a question. Are you watching on your phone or a computer? Because on my, on my computer, I go to twitch.tv uh, in the browser, and it looks like I'm watching it through, like, Vaseline. It's really terrible. Anyway, uh, this is... You can use any oil you want. Um, a higher viscosity oil is going to work better. This is a 1000 Centistokes silicone oil. That is comparable, somewhere between GPL 105 and GPL, no, sorry, G, GPL 106, GPL 107. It's around somewhere more or less, it's, it's fairly high viscosity uh, oil. You can see, let me see, well, yeah. You can see when I rotate the bottle, it takes a long time to like find its level. It's like very slow. You see a lot of, like sticks to the side. It's like, um, like, like olive oil or like warm honey or maple syrup or something. Or like, yeah. So, you know, whatever. Oh yeah, I know Soft is a fan of the hops. I mean, whatever works, right? The point is, you want it to be kind of sticky so it clings to the springs, and then you just, you know, drizzle a bunch in there. I already had some in there from before, and you really don't need a lot of this stuff. Oh, I'm actually running out of my first bottle. Wow, this stuff lasted me forever. Springs, it's kind of hard to over lube, but you don't want to put more than you need to. And then put it together and turn the sound down while I shake. Actually, do I need to? Let's turn the sound down so I don't kill your ears while I shake. Okay, we're pretty much done. RO59 is difficult to work with. In fact, I have some. RO59, let me talk about that. Let me talk about RO59 while I'm um, reassembling everything. Because I'll, I, I have, I have RO59 is really interesting stuff and I have some personal experience with it. The answer is yes, but ask when it's from. Uh, like it's good stuff to have, ask when it's from. Um, and ask if they make sure they've been shaking it regularly. That's what's important. 
In fact, I haven't shaken mine. I have to do it tonight. It also depends how much they're selling it. Somebody was somebody was actually basically proxying for the factory. The factory is like up in Massachusetts somewhere. And there was somebody on Reddit uh, recently who was just kind of like selling it on behalf, like was buying bulk from the factory and uh, just selling it in vials. So I bought two vials. Yeah, it goes bad quick. Right, let me start Let me start, start a workflow here and um, I'll get into the R59 business. All right, so now with the tub moving, all you do is you got springs. Um, some of them are going to be stuck together. Then you, you pull it out. You have to twist them apart. Just see how here... They're like stuck together. You have to just twist. Don't pull them. Just twist. Because otherwise you're gonna you're gonna damage the spring. Um, and I got my little pile of films. Although it's transparent, I'll put it on the gray part so I can see it better. Okay, there we go. So the process goes: grab film, put film on the bottom housing, then grab a spring. I guess. I guess the spring size doesn't matter, or the spring type doesn't matter. Grab a slider, grab a top, and pop it back together. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Do those springs, those springs don't even feel, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, let's do some science. We're here, let's do the science. All right, real quick, RO59, okay, here's the deal with RO59. It's a dry lube, but unlike you know Teflon dry lube, it's not like you're just spraying Teflon on and leaving like Teflon powder. It's like some kind of crazy, super scientific thing that like bonds to the plastic. Um, it's also very, very liquidy, and it doesn't like stay on, and it like globs up. Yeah, it's some weird engineered stuff, um, and it's like something suspended in water or like some kind of solvent. And it goes bad somehow where like it just, it will do the thing, but it like won't lubricate after if it sits around too long and you don't like shake it regularly. It's like really fussy stuff. Um, and also it like won't work the first time you apply it. Like you sometimes have to do like two or three coats of like brushing this really fussy like polymer liquid. It's like really weird stuff. Um, and yeah, exactly. It's probably best used on Alps switches. But uh, I have used it. Actually, I really want to try it on like another tactile switch, like browns or something, like vintage browns with RO59. That's going to be hot, you know? Um, the other thing I want to do is I've, I've done it. I've had a board with blacks, MX blacks with RO59. It wasn't like super, super smooth, but it was like subtly smooth. And like you could feel there were little scratchy points. It wasn't the smoothest thing in the world, but... Uh, it felt really nice and like it retained the original crispiness of the switch, which worked really well with the keyboard that it was on. It was a really nice build, but um, yeah, it's, it's hard to work with. It's, I mean, it sounds like you've been more experienced using it than I have. I've just used it on a few SKCL greens. I didn't really get good results. I had expired stuff from 2017, um, so it didn't really do anything. But uh, yeah, like you can't, like you can't tub lube with RO59, right? Uh, or can you? Because that would save time. You know, I know even if you still have to lay it out in a paper towel to let it dry, um, at least at least you can, um, you know, if you could tub lube, that would save quite a lot of time. But I don't know if that's possible. So actually, if you if you experience doing RO59, that'd be really, I'd be really curious to know about that. Okay. We got the side-by-side -side spring test. Can I tell the difference between the two springs? plate can I tell the difference between zeal's scuffed spring number one and zeal's scuffed spring number two oh my god <laughs> there's totally a difference oh my god Oh man, that is so funny. I mean, there should be a difference. That's what makes springs feel different. The number of coils versus the the stiffness of the wire. Like that that is how spring manufacturers control how the spring feels. These are totally different. This has to be the wider coil one and this has to be the tighter coil one. Let me check. Let me see if I'm right. about 
about inconsistency. That's just insulting. Yep, 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 yep. Here's the tighter coil one. <laughs> Seal, you fucking asshole. I don't know how you are as a person, but as a vendor, you're an asshole. Come on. What? I guess I'm swapping springs now. God damn it. And I crunched up that film. <sighs> All right. I'll be here when you're back. Okay, Zeal. Fine. I won't use your springs. If that's how you want it to be, that's how it's going to be. I'm going to use different springs. I have so many other springs. You're acting like you think I need you. I don't need you. I will probably throw these in the trash, to be honest. But I'll keep them. I'll keep them for right now. That's really annoying. That's extremely annoying. So I can do a quick spring science explanation of what just happened. Um, ah, that's so annoying. Hello. Heavy music. Welcome to the stream. Salt the rock. Uh, yeah, I mean, the people's, <laughs> the people's keyboard. Oh, those are the, those are the fat ones. Okay, so what is the deal with springs? Focus, please, there we go. So what do we see? The, your left springs, actually my left too, has wider coils and is it slightly longer? I can't tell actually. Eh, maybe the same length, maybe slightly longer. Wider coils on this side, tighter coils on this side. What does that mean? So I don't know if maybe the spring material is different. They actually are even slightly different colors. But you control the stiffness of the spring with the width of the coil. The wider the coil, the more... Think about a piece of metal. Metal doesn't really bend, right? I could press on a piece of metal this way, and I won't really bend it. Whereas if I take it like this and I jam my thumb in it, I'll, I'll bend these tweezers. Springs basically work like that by putting metal in a way that I can bend it in a controlled fashion. So if I make the metal more vertical, it, uh, it, it, it's less, less liable to bend. Therefore, if I have fewer coils, I think this is how it works. I, I'm not totally sure. I, I could be totally wrong. I think at least if it has fewer coils, the forces are going more down into the metal as opposed to sideways in the metal, which would be bending it which leads to a stiffer spring. Um, and so the reason I was able to tell is that even if, so there's there's two ways to make a spring a certain weight. You can, you can make it long and have lots of coils because the longer a spring is, the stiffer it is. Or you can make it very short and have fewer coils. Wait, did I have that backwards? Did I have that backwards? If it's short with few coils, if it's long with few coils, Maybe if it's long with few coils, it's less. I'm not sure. Anyway, you can you can control the feel of the spring by varying both the length and the number of coils and also the material, which I have no insight into. Um, and so even if they're the same bottom out weight, the less coiled spring, the, the spring with tighter coils had more give at the top. The spring with the tight coils had like, it kind of just sank under my finger. And when I was rolling over the tactile bump, it was like, eh, okay. And with the tighter coil, whether it was just giving me more resistance or whether it was just more resistance at the top, uh, it, by the time I got to the bump, it was like just much more satisfying to get over the bump. And uh, I like that feel a little better. So. I really don't know what happened on the production line. Um, if they are actually two grams apart, maybe they maybe they screwed up and they actually put both 67 and 65 gram springs in the same switch. Uh, or they are in fact both 67 gram, but one just 
I, I like the 67 gram better. Either way, screw that. I'm getting different springs. Um, I happen to have actually some KBD fan springs, which I've never used. So this is actually a good time to try KBD fan springs. That's true. I've tried the 60, the, the 35 gram springs, which are useless. 80 is too high. Let's see. I have so many. Oh my god. Great. Good opportunity to try something new. 45, 62, 80, 60, 67. That's what we want. All right, we're using KBD fan springs. I'm going to use the same tub because it's already coated with oil. It looks like our two hour limit is going out the window here. I wasn't expecting to do spring science. That's fine. So here's the other thing with springs is when I have a bag of springs, I just I just lube the whole thing at once, even if I'm not using all of them. I'm gonna have to separate these two. Interesting. So these 67 gram springs look a lot more like the wide coil springs. Let me see if I can go variety here. That's the thin coil and that's the wide coil. They're stuck together. Great. All right. Let's see if I can get them all lined up. The blue, they seem to contrast well in the blue. There you go. <laughs> it does sound like a little peck song. Uh, uh, uh. It was good on the camera before. Line up, line up. There we go. So, KVD fan springs in the middle. The heavier spring, which is presumably the correct 67 gram Gateron Zelio spring is on the right. And on the left is the tighter coil spring, which I assume is accidentally 65 gram springs, um, or even 60, 65 gram springs probably, or just another different batch of bad springs, I guess, the wrong springs. Um, and so it's actually encouraging that the KVD fans one looks exactly the same as the Gateron 67 gram one, the, the, the wider coil one, which I like. So that's encouraging. Looking forward to this now. I don't know how consistent KVD fan springs are. I've literally never used them before. Except, again, 35 grams. You, the spring doesn't matter. It's just literally there just to prevent you from smashing into the bottom of the keyboard. So I'm just untangling un, un, uh, a lot of these, which is going to be more boring, tedious work. But uh, it is kind of necessary to get good lube coverage. I know I'm going to untangle them after I shake. I used to not untangle because I was like, oh, well, it's just going to be untangled after I shake. But uh, it seems to, to just, just get more even coverage when they're untangled before you shake. I'm not going to do it perfectly necessarily. But it's just because if you have these like globs of like, you know, like five springs all wadded up together, that's just no good. They're just gonna get even more clumped up and the lube, the grease just won't get in there. Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh my God, no, KVD fans, what are you doing? No. All right, all right, all right. How much you wanna bet that KVD fan springs are literally just Gateron Zeal springs without the damn gold coating? Oh, I'm so glad I'm streaming tonight. I'm so glad you're getting to enjoy, to experience this with me. Does it look familiar? This pro oh, 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 you want to focus? Does this problem look familiar? Are you fucking kidding me? Those are, they look silver in the, the gold and the light. These are silver. These are, I've never opened this bag. There is no chance in hell that these are mixed up. I have never opened this bag. In my damn life. And this is what I find. Oh my god. Alright. Now, this, I bought this a year ago. I can't complain to them now, but um, I'm absolutely going to take photos, post this on Geek Hack. So, fair warning. You know, if you buy... I don't even want to test them. What I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm just going <laughs> to... I feel like I spend so many of my I feel like I spend such a large percent of my time like ripping on Zeal, but it's not Zeal. This must just be Gateron. Like, why would Zeal check to make sure this? Like, I don't know. Is he like manually sitting there testing his springs? Oh my god. 
Uh, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out the wide coil ones for this build. Um, and I, ha I have to I have to do a little geek hack right up of both of these because that's really annoying. Okay, this is a year ago, but uh, you know this is why your springs matter. You know, and it's like why? Do you, oh God! You know why do you swap springs? This is why, because when I buy springs, you know I expect them to be a certain way. Most industrial applications probably don't care what kind of spring is in your. It probably just doesn't matter. This was this was stab wire was bent, right? Well, it seems yeah, it's crooked. I'm just throwing that one out. I missed the trash. <laughs> you know, like probably most industrial customers don't care if the spring is two grams this or that way, right? But you know, we're going for meticulous perfection beyond what is reasonable. This is an unreasonable hobby, and I'm doing an unreasonable activity right now. Therefore, I'm going to be unreasonably meticulous um, in evaluating the, the, the parts that I'm putting into my keyboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to proceed with this, but we're going to make sure that we're not using any of the um, tight coil ones. You know, we can put them in the F row, or not the F row, the, the number row, or like on the, the right control key that you don't press very often, right? That's that's fine if we got one or two, but um, I would like to avoid a mix and match scenario like we just had, because, you know, it's a funny thing about springs is where like it'll feel fine if they're inconsistent, but when you've got a board that feels really consistent, switch to switch, um, it is a nicer experience. It's like less like less for your brain to process almost like it's it just, it's just, I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. All right. That's, that's separated. Enough. I just really enjoy it. Let me use a little more of this. Kind of too much. Kind of can't hurt. You can definitely like really over lube it, but it can't hurt. That much. All right. Back on that spring grind. Let me turn the volume down. Breaking news, what's up? I got breaking news, I can't wait for the breaking news. All right, so let me reassemble these. Now, hopefully this, hopefully we can get through this more quickly now. Oh, I have to put a slider in. <laughs> wait, what? Oh, these are much heavier. Oh, that's quite a bit heavier. Are you, are you playing with me or is that actual news? Do I need to look up the news? Are you, are you just trolling me right now? Really? That's like a big deal. So Iran invaded Iraq to Attack U.S. troops? What? Holy shit. Wait, what? Hold on, what? Oh, man. Oh man, Ira holy shit. And Iraq, okay, hold on, hold on. What, when is this, today? Oh my God. So it looks like, it looks like, <laughs> oh 
Holy crap. This is nuts. Okay, so, so Iran attacks U.S. missile bases in Iraq with missiles. And then and Iraq also says, you need to withdraw troops from our country. You know, I'm not... Um... Oh, that was yesterday. The withdrawal was yesterday? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You know, I'm not keyboards it should be a, should remain apolitical, but the situation seems mismanaged <laughs> on our side. And we we know who's managing things. So that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, fucking draft me all right interesting is that the kb defense springs i don't think i like this is turning into a longer stream than i wanted but i feel like again this is the sort this is the content that i feel like makes it interesting and just soldering a keyboard together with nice music can be everybody else's niche we're trying things we're experimenting today so Where's the slider that I just used? No. All right, so the KBD fans ones look the same. They look the same as the 67 gram wider wound Zelia Springs. They do not feel the same at all. In fact, they feel these have to be like 80 gram springs. There's no way these there's no way these are 67 gram springs. There's no way. KBD fans. Not a good look. Do I use a different weight? Do I just deal with it? This is for a friend. This isn't for me. Like, that's a dramatic difference. This is like, oh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want my friend to type on this. I would want to type on it. He might like it. I think it's way too heavy. Shit. All right. Well, so much for that idea. Which is this? Really one. This is a. Don't take the subway for a few weeks. Yeah. I mean, what's what's? Uh, it's it's funny that I'm actually less afraid of like armed conflict over this in the US um, because these are like governments pissing off governments like I, I I mean I guess unless unless there's an Iranian group that you know I don't know that seems it seems like pretty unlikely that something would happen at the subway oh might save something to blame them yeah 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 True. No, and knowing who's making the decisions right now, that certainly would be easy bait. As they say in uh, in Dota, easy. The letter E, the letter Z. Easy. Easy game. All right, back in the bag. I'm probably never going to use these. Damn, that's a bust. That's a real bust. Also, Mech Merlin, I saw you in chat. Welcome. Happy to be providing the evening's entertainment. Ah, oh, man. That's unfortunate. Like, you would think that there's advisors and uh, people that, that can be like, no, don't do it. It's a trap. It's bait. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to think about it anymore. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up later. I'll take the subway, yeah. All right, what do the sixty grams feel like? Let's just let's, we're just trying KBD fan springs right now. We're not even building a keyboard anymore. We're just trying springs. I should, you know, I should have checked. I should have checked to make sure they were. I, I don't know who who thinks that a spring is going to be like wildly off from what you expect. 
These look, they, these feel very uh, wiggly, so I assume these are more like a true 60 gram. 60 is very light. I think my friend might be. Actually, I think he came home. I can go in the other room and ask him. Yeah, it's actually more my speed. It's more like a, kind of like an Ergo Clear. Let me, he's in the other room. Let me go see what he thinks about this. All right, all right. The lighter springs have been approved, and he does, in fact, want a full backspace. So we are going to go back into a stabilizer um, before we are going to do one more stab before we actually solder this guy together. But hopefully, it'll go quick. Let me. Let me all right, hi. Hold on. That's a finished one. This one is not finished with the zeal spring has a film in it that one this one has a zeal spring in it let's take these all apart kbd fans and zeal <sighs> you know i also have uh, one up keyboard springs and, you know, this makes me nervous to try those too, um, because those were, I actually emailed and asked, and asked, um, uh, you know, what are your tolerances on the springs? And they were like, I don't know, our manufacturer doesn't even give us tolerances. So I'm kind of nervous to try those too. So, okay, so the 60 gram KBD fan springs are good to go. We're going to do one more tub loop. And... Then we can actually start reassembling. All right. <laughs> More spring untangling. Keyboards with a side of international politics. Like, it's such bullshit, man. Like, why do I get dragged into this? I'm just trying to live my life. People in Iran are just trying to live their lives. People in Iraq are just trying to live their lives. Some small number of people out there, you know, their living their life involves doing bad things to other people. But that's like a very small number of people. But nope, we got to drag everybody else into it. Got to 
to get everybody else involved. Everybody's selfish. Nobody can share. In an age of legal frameworks, contracts, government organizations, etc., everyone still acts like a child. The bad child at the birthday party, eating all the cookies, smearing the cake around because it's fun. Everyone always wants to be the birthday boy, even when it's not their birthday. I really should, I really have to hold my tongue. <laughs> Alienate certain, I mean, I, I assume everybody, everybody watching already knows how I feel about all this stuff. And, uh, Frankly, I assume most people watching feel the same way, just demographically. But I don't. Know, maybe I should. Maybe I just. Maybe I just just call it out. And just just say what I feel on stream, and uh, you know, there's no no sense. Maybe I should just be more morally have moral more moral integrity. But what do I know? I'm just a salt rock lamp with pipe cleaner arms. Where did I get my bowls? Um, where did I get my bowls? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, actually, I think I got them at the deli. They're literally just like, they're solo. They're just for like potato salad at a picnic. Like they're not, they're not like parts bowls. This I got on Amazon. This is magnetic. But, uh, it's just a bowl. Just plastic bowls. Third time's a charm. Let's go. Let's go. Let's build a keyboard. I think. Alright, maybe I get one, maybe get one more build out of this. We're really running low. This has lasted me. I don't know. Thousands of switches. Yeah, thousands, but. At least a thousand. Yeah, this is for like screws and stuff. I just Google like magnetic parts bowl. Why can't I scroll up? Oh, meetup space. Heck yeah. Yeah, we're, we're uh, oh man, that would be really, really cool. Get like an interim spring New York City meetup. We got the uh, New Jersey meetup coming up. New Jersey, New Jersey Institute of Technology, NJIT meetup, and then there's hopefully going to be a big NYC keyboard, uh, keyboard meetup later this year. The New Jersey one doesn't have a set date. Um, in fact, I think uh, Chameleon is coordinating so that the two meetups aren't like stepping on each other. Uh, likely in like spring like late spring like n late april early may kind of thing but at the, you know i'm not officially involved with the uh, nj meetup so i don't want to speak you know in any in any capacity that makes me sound like i know what i'm talking about just uh, just just from discussions on discord nothing nothing's finalized okay you know, I will say, I think these films are actually not from TX Keyboard, and they are a little more annoying to work with. They're kind of like a softer material than the uh, TX Keyboard films. I think I got these from Kibo. Ah, a good switch. A good switch. Thank you. Thank you, world. We're done. We're good. We did one switch. Am I out of bowls? I have more bowls, just not here. Hmm. Where do I put the finished switches? I need, I need to put the bad springs in a bag. Maybe I just put them in a pile. Eh, throw them in a pile. That's fine. So I keep track of this stuff. So what I was saying about films is that these films are not original TX keyboard films. These are from another company. Um, this is the only other brand of films I've ever seen. Um, and the difference is the, keyboard, the TX keyboard ones are nice and stiff. And uh, they're they're easy to work with. These are a little floppy, which can make them 
a little more susceptible to getting put in misaligned and uh, crushed or something like that. Nice. That's going to be a really cool meetup, I think. There's a lot of people really itching for one. Uh, that you know they missed KeyCon, they got into the hobby too late, or you know they couldn't go, or they, they couldn't RSVP because um, it filled up. And uh, people don't necessarily want to wait until the fall to do a meetup. You know, there's we had SoCal, we had NorCal. There's a Seattle meetup. There was just a Toronto meetup. Uh, I think people are really eager to get out there. There's been a lot of keyboard innovation. A lot of new stuff came out. I think people are pretty eager to get out there and show it show off each other stuff. And uh, check out check out new stuff that that you know they haven't seen before. There's a lot. There's a lot of very uh, interesting keyboard collections in New York City. So hopefully we can get some of those people out to this interim meetup and uh, you know get their get their get their cool stuff in front of the eyes of the local New York City keyboard scene. Yeah, definitely mini meetups. Definitely mini meetups are going to be fun. I think they, uh, you know, I like hanging out with you guys in real life. Um, just, it's, I don't know, just being up friends, looking at keyboards. We just need better venues is the problem. That Whole Foods was fine, but it's just like not the best. Got to watch out for food on the table. It's loud. Can't really hear the sound of any keyboards at all. Not enough seating. So it really, you know, isn't ideal at all. But I don't know what else we can do. There's uh we were looking into some small library spaces, but it seems like those are kind of hard. <laughs> Actually, what I should do is I should get my non-keyboard IRL friends to come through and hang out. But they're going to just be like, what is all this? I don't, I don't know what is all this. They're not. Uh, they might not get it. All right, before I get into this and before I start bantering to cover the extreme boredom of reassembling switches, I'm going to get some water. So I will be right back with hydration material. <laughs> Bring a Norby to keep me up today. <laughs> hey, you never know. Like that, uh, you know, last time, um, for anyone that wasn't there, when we were, we had a, a first mini meetup in Whole Foods, some random, you know, like Lower East Side older lady comes over and like is just checking out our keyboards. You know, she's just checking out the keyboards. And uh, why does this one feel so much heavier than the other ones? Oh, no. KVD fans, no. 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 Uh, all right. No, these are the... This one's slightly heavier. I just... All right, we're going to live with the inconsistency. This is a live and learn situation. Don't use KVD fan springs. Don't use gather on stock springs. These are the same, right? These are all the same. They're just inconsistent. Don't 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 buy these. 
buy from a trusted spring band brand. Uh, novel keys, I, I haven't tested too much yet, but it should be good. TX keyboard, always good. Um, who else is good springs? Uh, uh, Singa springs, also known as Cat Wee Wee. <laughs> I don't know if it's Wee Wee Wee. I don't know how to spell Cat Wee Wee. Those are, those are sold. The springs that are sold on switchmod.net uh, are not in stock very often, but they are good. Um, Sprit is a scammer, but you can buy his springs aftermarket now and then. Um, they have come and gone in different rounds. Uh, some rounds are better than others. I would say older Sprit springs are probably better unless you get the slow curve ones. I think I just don't particularly like how his newest newer springs feel and again he's a scammer so you shouldn't buy them retail i mean he was a scammer in 2015 but he hasn't exactly made any attempts to repent or make good the people that he scammed so in my mind he's still a scammer and i've actually flipped on that i used to not care so much but i care a lot more now it's not worth it like to satisfy your curiosity ask somebody to send you five sprit springs i'll do it pm me if you want to try sprit springs well, that spring has been lost to the floor. But yeah, don't buy this spring. Buy him, buy him on Mac Market for sure. Yo, the Amazon Basics keyboard, okay. The Amazon Basics keyboard, honestly, is a pretty damn good keyboard, especially considering it's $10. I like, I, I still will use, I mean, you know, you're bottoming out into plastic because it's it's a rubber dome keyboard, right? There's only so good a rubber dome keyboard it's gonna feel, but honestly, as, as far as rubber dome keyboards go, the Amazon Basics keyboard is um, fine. It's <laughs> like, I, I liked mine. Like for chiclet, especially for chiclet keys, like it really had a nice spring to it. It's $10, it's, the che it's like the cheapest keyboard you can buy. It's pretty good. Okay, quick tip. When you're doing films and springs, put the film in first. Because if you put the spring in first, I did this in my last switch absentmindedly, and I want to show you guys what happens. So I put the, I put the spring in. Okay. And I try to put the film in. It's like very light. It, you has to, yeah, see, it's getting tangled up on the spring. Like, where's the camera? There you go. Like, this happens. It's really annoying because you have to take this and like fit it around it's just a, a lot more annoying to put the spring on before the film. So put the film on first and then do the spring. Try it both ways, you'll see. Oh my God. Also, these films are awful to work with. Don't buy Kibo films, only buy TX films. I don't know if Kibo still sells them, but don't buy them from Kibo. I assume Kibo was reselling them from TX. They're not. These are different. These are different material. Uh, don't buy them. I, I think Kibo is actually run by nice people. Uh, they're a good vendor. Uh, they will, you know, they're, they're interested in the quality of their product. I have to email them and tell them, I mean, these are also from a year ago. I don't know if they changed or they're not even selling them anymore, but if they're still selling them, I have to tell them do not sell these because they're not any good. They're really hard to work with. And I will recommend against people buying them kind as they have been to me. I will rec recommend against people buying particularly their films. Oh, I did it again. Also, do not buy these springs from Kibo, at least again, as of a year ago. I spoke to them. I think they're using YMDK springs, like wh whoever their manufacturer is. Um, and they are awful. They're god awful. Don't use their springs. Um, and don't use their films. They make some cool cases and stuff, and they, and they sell switches at a good price, but don't use their films. Don't use their springs. What's so special about Spirit Springs? Uh, you know, once upon a time, Sprit was a very big name in springs. Not necessarily because they were the best, but because it was hard to find customs. Like, there weren't that many custom springs you could get, particularly outside of Korea. Um, you could get, wait, what? I think, you know, there was, there was like a KBD Lab spring brand for a while. There was... Um, I think OTD sold springs. WinKeyList.kr sold springs. Is there a film in here or not? I don't know if there is. Oh, there was. Um, so I don't know if they were any better than like any of the other old Korean springs. Gone sold springs. 
Um, so I, I can't say if they were any better than other springs at the time. But uh, there was a period when they were the only decent springs you could get after market. You know, KB defense springs are apparently ass. YMDK springs are ass. Um, you know, any kind of name, name uh, unbranded springs are just going to be bad, in my experience. It's not worth it. Like, it's just not worth the risk. It's not that it's not that they're expensive. It's I mean it's ten dollars. It's not cheap, but it's not super expensive. It's more just like your time and effort, and then you build you, know, you put five switches together, find out that your springs are all inconsistent, and then you you know wait have to wait to order more or something like that. You know, um, sprit springs historically have been a very steep curve. So this so the spring starts light and then ramps up in force as a lot as you get towards the bottom. Um, People lately also have been gravitating towards what Sprit called a slow curve spring, where the force uh, starts, you know, medium high already, and then only ramps up a little bit as you get towards the bottom of the spring. Um, and people more and more have been getting into these slow curve springs. Uh, Gateron yellows, I think, were the first switch to include a to know it to deliberately include a slow curve spring in the switch people really liked them people were buying gateron yellows just for the springs um and then sprit actually came out with a line of slow curve springs and that's where the that's where the term came from was actually sprit's term but again you know i don't know i mean people change sure over several years but the fact of the matter remains not only did sprit never make you know, uh, make anybody whole, or at least some people were made whole, a lot of people weren't. Also, apparently he's he's extremely slow to ship um, and unreli like, it's just really unreliable. You'll take, you'll get a shipping label and it will be in like label created, not dropped off at the post office yet for three weeks. So I don't know if he just does shipments in bulk or what, but he, and he won't email you back. He's not a great vendor to work with. On the other hand, he's very kind. You know, I reached out to him about some version numbering of the springs, and he got back right back to me. He was he actually changed his packaging at my request. Um, so on that in that regard, he's a great vendor to work with. But when you're just a regular consumer buying from him, the experience is bad. Um, and you know, he was not is was a scammer who never made people whole after deciding not to be a scammer anymore. Um, you know, the other thing that Sprit does is he has a million varieties of springs. So if you're, what you want isn't out there, Sprit has it. Um, apparently he will do custom weight springs for you, uh, which is pretty cool. So I don't know. I guess the don't buy spring thing, maybe it's just an old curmudgeon thing. I don't know. But yeah, he's, I mean, he's got all, all manner of slow curve, fast curve, uh, super lightweight, super heavyweight. You want 20 gram springs, Sprit has it. You want to swap springs for your low profile kale switches, Sprit has it. Um, you want 120 gram springs because <laughs> you're ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Sprit has it. Um, you want 30, 63.5 gram springs, Sprit has it. You want 63.5 gram slow curve springs, Sprit has it. Uh, supposedly they're, you know, they're marketed as being accurately weighted. Um, you know, I've tested a few in unscientific scenarios and yeah, they, they're accurate enough. Um, but are they better? Yeah. You know, I've, I felt sprit springs that are whenever, whenever I do blind tests of springs, whatever I like, you know, I'll write the spring on the switch do a bunch of spring swaps, write the spring on the switch, do them blind with keycaps on. Sprit doesn't typically come out as my favorite spring when uh, when I'm doing blind tests. Often they feel a little too soft at the top, although I, I haven't done that with slow curve much. So, you know, I guess the short version is the springs themselves aren't the best necessarily, but that's because the um, the regular springs are opinionated, um, and 
And what you can do is you can get a different opinion. You can get the slow curve ones instead. Still, you could also buy from TX Keyboard. They ship promptly. The price is actually a little lower. Um, and TX has been nothing but, an, well, as far as I'm aware, has been nothing but an upstanding vendor in the community. Um, and so you can feel good supporting them. That is my long-winded speech on springs. One kilogram springs. Hey, man. Someone out there has got the beefy fingers. That Bic pen spring meme, meme has been a meme for a long enough time that... I, I know people have tried it. Like People have actually put a pen spring in a keyboard. I think part of the reason they're so stiff in a keyboard in particular is that they're so long. And they're so much longer than the space you have available on a Switch. So, you know, the more the more a spring is compressed, the more force it applies in a, a, a against against the compression. So uh, if you have a very stiff spring and then you also, at, even at the top of the stroke, it's already very, you know, very far compressed, that is going to be a mighty, mighty spring indeed. And that, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know why people do that stuff. Like, I felt a keyboard, a full keyboard built with, mega blacks you know 120 gram black you can't type on it there's no point it's just it's just an expensive trophy of your silliness i don't get it i wouldn't build a keyboard i wouldn't want to type on at least not for myself if i ever do commission builds yeah i'll build your stupid keyboard if you want me to build it paying me you're here because you want to be here. I'm happy you're here. The Nintendo Switch. <laughs> I mean, are you, as, as someone who knows nothing about keyboards, what's your impression? I mean, what's your impression of keyboards? Is this what you thought a keyboard build stream would be like? I mean, you haven't, should I, should I like, pause and show off keyboards it was easier when i had my friend here because then uh, uh she you know one of us was able to do one thing and the other person was able to just show off stuff but as a uh i don't know what do you what do you think about all this as an outsider yeah these are totally different what no this is, okay no, this is the same it's just the angle <laughs> you're not even sure <laughs> oh no film that god these these clear films are so obnoxious to work with oh my god like i'm saying at the beginning of the stream this is a level of meticulousness and obsessiveness that i think most people uh never care to have and never care to achieve in their lifetimes and also does not get streamed very often. I was saying there's only a few keyboard streamers who will do lube streams because um, it involves all this tedious work. Um, but I'm doing it because why not? All right, what is, what are you guys saying here? Oh, well, welcome. I'm glad that you're... Uh, able to chillax with my stream regardless um and thank you for sharing my stream in a non-keyboard discord <laughs> you know I, I feel like a lot of people got into the hobby uh recently he, the hobby's really blown up in i think in large part due to that one keyboard streamer uh, teha types who has he's actually i think he's streaming right now still um who has really high quality produced content really high quality streaming content um, and you know, some he's just put in the work to do the marketing and build up a, a reputation. He's a Twitch partner, um, and it's just drawn a huge amount of people into the community, which has been great for the community overall. I think there's a few issues with having more people in the community. We can talk about that if someone's interested. But overall, um, having more people in keyboards, I think, is a great thing for keyboards, and I think it's true for any hobby, particularly any hobby that requires 
you know, ultimately depends on uh, industrial mass production of parts. Because you can't just make one switch. I can't just make 500 switches. I have to make between 5,000 and 50,000. Or, you know, whatever. Oh, I just destroyed that film. Let's throw that one in the trash. Blech. I crunched up the film in the slider and just got all messed up. Expensive hobbies. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely inexpensive. I mean, I'll just give my pricing speech in a second. Uh, there's something else I wanted to say. There's something else I wanted to respond to. What was it? Oh, the hollow cylinder? <laughs> yes, actually, somebody has done that. Um, there is one particular keyboard with like this one particular kind of rubber covering on the switches that if you cut it apart in just the right way, you can actually use it to replace the spring in the switch. Um, and instead of being, you know, a, a, a smooth up and down, it's like a super tactile experience. Um, I've never done it. It's a very labor intensive <laughs> mod. Uh, it's very weird, but it can be done. You can take, theoretically you can, yes, you can take a cylinder of some kind of rubber, replace the spring with it. That is a possibility. Heavy music, EV music, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. What is your expensive hobby? Are you into collecting guitars, just music recording gear in general, which, as I recently found out, is enormously expensive? Um, I mean, there's so many expensive hobbies out there. Like, things that aren't meant to be expensive. Like, keyboards... I mean, cherry keyboards have always been expensive for keyboards, but like that's like a hundred dollars. You're like, oh yeah, I'll pay a hundred dollars for, you know, a premium computer keyboard. But that's it. Nope. There's people out there. I mean, God, you can pay. I mean, then there's collectability. Uh, it's just it's a whole. That's a rabbit hole for sure. Expensive hobbies, music production. Yep. Believe that. Oh good, you'll appreciate my struggle then. Nice, yeah, I theoretically am a musician, but I don't really practice much at all nowadays. Um, like, theoretically I'm a bassist, but I, I don't know. I didn't have the best music education. I've been playing music for a really long time, but I didn't have a great music education. And I kind of like, once I was at an age where I could sort of go on and like choose my own pursuits with my own money and my own time, I kind of had found other interests that were really like either financially intensive or time intensive or both. Um, so it's sort of on my like long-term life to-do list is to like actually get better at music. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Bass gang. Oh, wow. We got a lot of basses. Cool. Good gang, good instrument. But yeah, something like <laughs> yeah, bling bling. Yeah, that's from that two set um those those the two set violin YouTube channel. Those guys are hilarious. And yeah, exactly. Oh no, it's it's so obvious too. Like I I practice every day for a week, even a week, I, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can play anything. Or, you know, two weeks. Oh, my God. If I practice every day for two weeks, I'm like, oh, it's going to be lube on my tweezers. I just, like, forget, you know? It's like I have to make it part of my day. It's like going to the gym. If it's part of your routine, you just go. If it's not part of your routine, you never go. So own it or drop it, I guess. Right? What? My hands are oily now. I've got to wash them off after I do this. Own it or drop it. Slap bass. Yeah. It's a fun technique. That definitely, I definitely, that's probably one of the, the as far as right hand techniques go, uh, it's that and like the three finger, uh, like high speed stuff that you got to do for metal. Um, that's definitely 
Those are dumb. I'm better at slapping than the three finger thing, but it's definitely somewhat of an un uncharted territory for me. I don't really know how to slap tastefully. I can li I listen to if I listen to it a lot and like play it along with it, you know, you could pick it up. But good guy. <laughs> when you say you're learning, you know you're already a multi instrumentalist. I'd be curious as to how you learn. Do you, I mean, do you watch YouTube videos? Do you just play along with songs that you know are slapping and just try to figure it out? Always be curious. I'm always curious about how other people learn anything, let alone music, which I'm interested in. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> sounds like sounds like me then. Sit down with some songs, try to learn the songs, watch a video. Oh, that's the cool technique. Then you go learn that. Spend time practicing it. Yeah, you know, here I am building a keyboard instead. I could be playing bass right now. I could be practicing right now, building a keyboard instead. Yeah, I do play shows in a in a band, but you guys don't want to hear that. I'm I'm actually probably actively gonna not post that because that's a different me. It's a different life. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like, I'm kind of still in sort of like a, after all this time with keyboards, I'm still in somewhat of a honeymoon mode because I'm like, I finally feel like I have all the tools I need. I feel like I have the knowledge I need. I feel like I have the experience, the you know hands-on experience I need. And, and also I, I know a lot of people now. I feel like it's starting to slow down with the keyboards where I'm, I don't feel like I have to, you know, um, I don't feel like I have to like chase down new things all the time. I can sort of just have things come to me and then, and then build a keyboard when I get a new keyboard. But, uh, yeah, right now it's still taking up a good amount of my like extracurricular hobby time. Because this is a long story. I mean, we're, you guys are sitting here for two, almost two hours and 40 minutes. I'm getting there. Only a few switches left. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a long, tedious process. So I got into like reading during it or watching movies or something like that. So at least I'm consuming culture while I'm, uh-oh, crunched another film. Yeah, at least I'm consuming culture while I'm doing it and not just completely just checking out from everything. Great British Baking Show is a great thing to do. Great great show to watch while you're losing switches. Make a bass out of keyboards? Yeah, I mean, like not like a MIDI keyboard, right? Like actually program it right into the keyboard. That would be pretty funny. People have done things like that where, where uh, actually was it the Plunk keyboard had a speaker in it um, and QMK and ARM, the ARM, ARM uh, based QM keyboards that run QMK can support a speaker. So you actually can have like a piano mode in your keyboard and it will play music for you out the speaker that's built into the keyboard, which I find delightful <laughs> and completely useless. Yeah, AV Music. Look up the 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 plank keyboard. Here, I'll put it in chat. That's the one with a speaker in it. You'll get a kick out of that if you're a musician. That's a, that's a funny one for sure. All right, we're getting down to the last few here. I'm actually running out of these films, which is good because I don't want to use them anymore. But I'm running out of them. So if I, if I have a few switches that aren't filmed left over, I will just stick them in places where they're going to be inconspicuous. Because, you know, it, it really doesn't matter if you only press it, press the key, you know, once a week. <laughs> Who cares how it feels, honestly? But if you press it every day or it's, it's, it's part of the sort of general rumble of typing, then that's where you really care about the consistency. That's where you really care about the feel. That's where you care about the, having the correct weight. That's where you care about smoothness, rattle, etc. It doesn't really matter if you're like, you know, again, if you 
how many people press how often do you use the right windows key for example on the right side of your keyboard the you know the windows key to pull up the start menu or something on your right side of your keyboard most people at least most right-handed people just don't you know using a standard layout most people just don't do that and uh because the right hand's on a mouse or something like that god man i keep so what can happen with these films is um if they're not aligned right oh, this one's actually fine if they're not aligned right the little like legs on the switch can get caught on the uh on on part of the film it's impossible to show because it's all clear but um it, it can be misaligned and then the switch won't actuate and it just becomes it becomes like a crunched up mess and this film in particular i think has been salvaged but the couple that I threw out were have been destroyed due to that. Um, and the reason why I'm testing each switch in my hand before I put it put it down is I'm actually making sure that the film isn't uh, rubbing against the slider, which can also happen if it's like really egregiously misaligned. Um, you'll notice that I'm sort of doing this kind of far back off camera. You'll notice that. When I'm putting the film in, my finger is kind of like up on the back of the keyboard of the switch like that. It's doing that for a reason. I have my hand there for a reason, and that's because, again, I, the fact that I'm using clear films makes this very hard to to show on camera. But let me stick the film in first. Okay, that prevents the film from being installed too far to the back and too far forward. See, my thumb and forefinger, my index finger, are like right there, holding the film in place. And that way, when I'm putting the top on the switch. And put a spring in all that first. Ah. Okay, there we go. When I'm putting the top on the switch, it keeps it from pushing it like forward and back. And that way the film sits in the right way and isn't going to brush against the slider. But it can still happen, so. I like to test each one, uh, you know, make sure it's um, been put together correctly. Because once it's in the board, you got to desolder it to fix it, and that's just a lot more work that I don't want to go through. Oh, the plonk is cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say it's, I guess it's like old news at this point. Um, it was really innovative at the time. The whole idea of a, a forty percent ortho linear keyboard, they call it, it was totally original. Um, at least back then. In like 2016 when it came out but the the speaker i think was only added last year or maybe even early this year there's a relatively affordable one too uh if you really want the version with the speaker in it uh there's a version that's like a it doesn't have a metal case so it's a lot cheaper let me try to find the link actually let me let me finish these switches and then i'll find the link or somebody else if somebody wants to look up the um the the easy on the wallet case for the Planck keyboard, or the Planck keyboard, I guess, because it's named after the scientist. But it's a pun, so it's a Planck. Yeah. Somebody wants to look up the Easy on the Wallet Planck keyboard kit. It's, uh, I think, $50 all in. Includes the PCB. Mine, actually, I will say there was a problem with mine. Um, and I did not reach out to... I did not reach out to the to the to the uh, company OLKB. I didn't read. Excuse you. I didn't reach out to them to get it fixed. I uh, should have. Now it's probably way too late. So I actually mine really isn't functional, which is kind of a bummer because I wanted to use it. Well, it's functional. It's just one key doesn't work in a place where like it's not that annoying, but it's kind of annoying. It's a key I sort of wanted to use. Because it's such a small keyboard, you kind of can't have, you can't like, unlike a big 10 keyless keyboard, you can't exactly like just have a key that you don't use because it's so small, everything's functional. So I don't know, it's, it's kind of annoying, I guess, that uh, I can't really use it and I paid money for it. So no, not so easy on the wallet after all, but, um, you know, if you buy one, test it, and then I guess you can always return it if it's not working. And I tried. I got in there with the soldering iron. I tried to fix it, but there's some weird. They use some like weird components that I'm not that I, I'm not able to replace. I refloated all the joints. The solder joints didn't work. 
But uh, what's nice about what's nice about the Easy on the Wallet one, the the new plonks is that um, you don't need a soldering iron to actually install the switches. So as a as a newbie, you know, it costs fifty dollars for the keyboard and the and the and the case all in together, all the hardware and everything. And all you have to do is buy switches and keycaps. Uh, switches are better and cheaper than they've ever been. And keycaps are just everywhere. Um, and being ortholinear, if you don't really care about the look of the keycaps so much, you can get any keycaps anywhere for super cheap. 16 USD for the plate. There you go. Then you get a PCB for what, like 35, 45, something like that. And uh, you got to buy switches and keycaps. All right, there we go. We're done. And uh, then you got yourself a keyboard for not much money. It's unique. It's small. You got to maybe get used to the small layout. But, you know, if you're just sending emails, you're not like doing a lot of intensive coding or something like that. Um, yeah, exactly. It is very different <laughs> in terms of the size. But again, you know, if you're using it for like emails and stuff or just, you know, at work, doing whatever, it's, it's, uh, it's really comfortable, it's fun, it's a great travel keyboard. Put whatever switches in it, you can try different switches, get into the hobby that way. I need a bag for these, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bag this up off stream. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a bad place to start in the hobby, you know? All right, so we're done with the switch assembly. It probably took about, I don't know, like an hour and a half, I would say maybe, disassembly, lubing with all the interruptions, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, that sounds about right, an hour and a half. Okay, so now we're done with that, finally. Um, we have to do one more stabilizer because he does in fact want the full backspace. I guess I can grab a clip in. Oh, not much. Just talking about uh, the Plonk as an intro keyboard. Talking about... Talking about... Um, oh, that's probably it, actually. I don't know how long you were away. Let me try to find my screws. We're gonna take the clip-ins off of this guy. If he uses this 2U wire. Cause I don't know where I had a, I had a big bag of um, magnetic screws in the right size and I have no idea where they are. They were, I thought they were in a certain place. It was the logical place to have them. And it wasn't there. So they're somewhere, but I don't know where that somewhere is. And for now, I'm going to have to live with not knowing and live with not having them. So we're just going to use a random clip in. All my stabs are all mixed up anyway. Evie, having two brain cells is like too many for keyboards. I am dumb as hell, <laughs> so <laughs> you're good. Um, to answer your question, uh, Jesse, I joined the Neuron group by. Where did I put my Permatex? 
pretty sure I didn't put it back in the box, which I should have done, but I didn't. If I were my dielectric grease, where would I put them? No, for real, there's a lot of helpful people in keyboards. There's a lot of unhelpful people in keyboards, too, to be fair, but... Um, I think, you know, for the most part, especially you're in a good crew here, the, the NYC keyboard discord crew, a lot of helpful people, a lot of kind people. And, uh, Jessie will set you straight. She'll, she'll set you going in the right direction. Last <laughs> percent. All right. KBD fan springs not using these again. I might just throw them out, honestly. Just sell them with a warning. Not very good. I don't know where I put the Permatex, actually. I, like, just stuck it over here. Oh, it's underneath my, like, mouse wrist wrap. No wonder. Yeah, and the other thing about keyboards too is there's a lot to learn. I mean, there's history. There's a, so many different keyboards out there. There's lots of, I mean, look at all these little details that I'm incorporating into this build. There's all these things I know that I'm just doing because I know them. I know how to do them. I have hands-on experience with them. It's, it's, a, it's a learning process, you know? It takes, it takes years of hands-on experience. And if you, I mean, if you have friends that you can try things at meetups, it goes faster. But you know, if you don't really go to meetups and stuff, um, or you don't have meetups in your area, or you know, it can take a while to just he hearing about things online, reading different forums, finding out what the forums are. Um, you know, it's a relatively small community still, obviously a lot smaller than music production. But uh, ooh, do I band aid mod? I have band aids. I have cloth band aids. Hmm. Well, the rest of them are Band-Aid mod. All right, I got to get... Wait, this one's Band-Aid mod, right? Yeah, I got to get Band-Aids to Band-Aid mod this. Um, where to start? I think the best place to start is somewhere. Anywhere. Uh, if the plunk, you know, easy on the wallet kit is where you start, that's where you start. Um, if you buy a Corsair gaming keyboard with Cherry MX Reds, then that's where you start. Yeah, the mechanical keyboard subreddit's good. Uh, Geek Hack can be overwhelming at first, but it becomes a useful resource as you and the desk authority for vintage stuff. Um, the the keyboard discord, especially the the, the one that's a, uh, officially affiliated with the uh, uh, the subreddit is kind of overwhelming. Um, but honestly, okay, so you've started, you've already started, you've begun. And um, somewhere definitely just somewhere and then try things you know hey I want to try this thing today I want to try that thing um, or you know I, I went to a meetup and I tried something now I want one or uh, I watched Teja stream and now I want one or I don't want one but I'm really happy I know it and I learned something today uh, and that's why I like to I like to make educational content because it's exactly the, the idea is exactly like bring people in show them what's out there and maybe some of it will be appealing. Now I will say that there are a lot of issues in the community, like any relatively small niche online community that contains a lot of nerds. And there are places that have toxic cultures. There are places that are, you know, clicky or they're old boys clubs or whatever. Um, if you hang out with us, 
Yeah, actually, yeah, just go watch Teja, honestly. But either way, you know, if you hang out on the NYC Discord, you're going to be exposed to some very kind people and also very knowledgeable people. And you'll learn a lot. And you learn by trying things, too. Right, I'm going to get a full... I'll use the shift key for now. Good. Oh, first try. Join the Discord anyway, who cares? You can be a guest. The switch is, is uh, clicking around in there a little bit because it's not soldered in, but. First try, baby. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with the method that I like. I might even start Band-Aid modding again. I like that little softer bottom out on the stabilized keys. Okay. You know, we took a diversion into Spring World, but we're back. <laughs> We made it back and we're ready to start building. So tips about building, just cause I'm doing it. I'm already doing it. Might as well talk about it. You want to place a few switches in the corners to hold the plate up. And then, uh, then you put the plate on cause then the switches hold the plate up. Uh, and then, then you should just be able to snap them in like normal. Now, DC. Okay, there is a there is a um a DC keyboard community. They actually have a DC meetup. Um, there is a DC Discord. There, I don't know if there's anything official in Philadelphia. Uh, there's certainly one in Washington DC though, and there's a there's a Virginia one as well. So, the one problem with this keyboard build, which I just forgot about, is that uh, this is the the classic GH60 PCB. There are many things called GH60. This is the actual GH60. And the problem with um, the GH60 is that the, check this out. The switch has two little plastic pins. There's two metal pins to make electrical contact. Yeah, yeah there you go. And then there's two plastic pins. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Stream's already blurry. Don't make this harder. Uh, all right, I'll take my word for it. There's two plastic pins just to hold everything in place, keep it from being twisted around or, or whatever. Problem is that these holes are kind of too small for these plastic pins. Now, I've assembled this keyboard once already, so the holes got a little stretched, uh, you know, worked out, but it's going to be a bit of a, a struggle to actually get these switches to all sit flush. Uh, Jesse, you're a novel, uh, relatively new keyboard streamer. So, or keyboard builder. So you pay attention to this. This plate is just, I don't know. I bought it. This is uh, stainless steel. You can polish stainless steel. See, the back side is not uh, nothing special. It's just, just gray. They polished. I guess they polished it. I don't know how to do that. How you do that stuff? I'm not very handy with like metal workshop type stuff. So yeah, when you're building a keyboard, oh, that switch goes in the other way. When you're building a keyboard, uh, one thing, if you want to have a build that looks good and feels good um, and disassembles easily and uh, assembles easily, you need to make sure that your switches are seated fully in the PCB, um, which makes sure that they're straight in the line. And I'm just going to wipe this off one more time because I got some fingerprints on it doing that. I should get, I have a microfiber thing somewhere, but this is fine. It's stainless steel. I'm not going to scratch it. I'm trying to only touch the bottom. It's quite a fingerprint magnet. Right. So, check this out. And I know Anthony Oy is also really big uh, proponent of this. Dude, it's a mirror. How sick is that? Look at that. What's the point? That's the point. <whistles> uh, see me. Can I show you yourselves? Can the angle? Yeah, there you go. There's you. Yeah. 
Now, you see it around the edge. It actually looks really, really cool. Trust me. You'll see it when it's assembled. Trust me. Also, like, this is keyboards. People, people have, you know, polished, like, internal... People go totally nuts on aesthetic things. That people match their... I mean, people color match the sliders of the switches. It's literally going to have keycaps on it, and you will never see it. People want gold springs instead of silver. They will pay extra money for gold-plated springs purely because it's gold and it looks good. You're going to look at it like five times in your whole life once you're done building it. This is keyboards. Polish your steel plate. It looks really cool. I should. I, I guess you just do sandpaper and then finer sandpaper. And I don't know. How, I don't know how to do anything handy like that. All right. Now the work begins of just installing the switches. And you do see it through the keycaps a little bit. It, it'll it'll reflect light. So the thing about this is what I was saying is you have to make sure the switch is fully installed. So you can see, again, they're, them being clear is difficult, making it difficult. And me not, not being familiar with this camera angle also makes it difficult. Focus, focus. Okay. The center post of the switch is here. The two plastic posts are here. Those need to be fully inserted because what we do not want to have happen, so see how this is flush with the PCB. That's good. We want that. What can happen is, so this is actually going, yeah, here, see this? That ain't flush. There's a little bit of a gap between the PCB and the switch. That's no good, we don't want that. So you have to really jam it down. Really jam it down, because these are, these are tight. Make sure, and this is, you know, like more of an expert old old builder thing. The fuck is that? Let's see if I can. Band. I don't know if anybody knows them, but they've been banned, or if that's a bot. I got my first bot. <laughs> that's so exciting. I'm famous. Let me close my lid. Bot from, did you bring this into my server, Jesse? <laughs> or am I in my stream? They follow you from your, uh... nah, it probably just goes through the list of people streaming. So yeah, so that's that's one thing about this PCB in particular is you have to be careful that it really jams all the way in. Oh, we got a bot came in and, and advertised some garbage. I they have been they've been summarily banned. And so anyway, once you once you've once you've made sure it's all all flush, then you just do one at a time, making sure they're flush. And that's why I went. Another reason to go around um, is that uh, it, it takes out any warping in the system, so that if the plates bowed a little bit, if the PCBs bowed a little bit. It all just holds it together nicely. But now that everything's kind of installed the way we need it, we can just go in order, top to bottom, left to right, whatever makes sense. I should really be wearing like gloves or something. Do I have? Just so I don't keep getting fingerprints on the plate. That's okay, Evie. Uh, I upload all my streams and I try to time and I timestamp them. So actually, if you want to go back, you can uh, hopefully easily refer to it. Oh, these gloves are so stiff. These are not. These are like outdoor. Oh, my fingers are. These are like outdoor work gloves. <laughs> ah. I have tiny little hands too, so the fingertips are just like flopping around in the breeze. I think the expression really is flapping in the breeze, but you can flop in the breeze as well as you can flap in the breeze. Yeah. 
takes a little extra force, but you know, I actually did the hard work the first time, and it seemed to have widened the holes sufficiently that the second time isn't so bad. That or it uh, maybe shaved some of the plastic off the legs so they're not as egregiously fat. This was a pain in the ass to assemble the first time. Did I bend any pins? That's the other thing too, is because you're soldering it together, you don't want to bend the uh, switch pins. You gotta take it out and do it again. Yep, just bent that one. Speak of the devil. Oof, that's not good. That's another thing that can happen, is uh, Is that the spring? No, this is another spring. What is this? Heck. Did I completely lose a slider? Heck, double heck. Yes, it is gone. It is gone. Yeah, these gloves are, are terrible. <sighs> okay, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put this aside. <laughs> we are going to just use a different switch. Yeah, there's the film, there's the spring, there's the top housing, the bottom housing stuck, and the slider is gone. So we're gonna just have to swap in another switch for like the escape key or something like that. Oh boy. So, okay, here's what happened. It was actually good that the top's off, I can show you guys. Well, also, these gloves are, are not for this. These are, like, way too stiff. I got these at the hardware store. Like, the people that, the, the, the gloves that people use for soldering have a much thinner, like, this is a really thick rubbery coating. People people don't use gloves that thick. It's a, I don't know where they get them, though. They look very nicely fitting. I don't know where people get gloves like that. I, I would like to. These were supposed to be like that, but they're not. So, check this out. Because the PCB is such a tight fit, it's actually gripping the plastic legs. Um, and between the two clips, clipping it into the plate, and the plastic legs gripping on the back, uh, it actually ripped the, my switch opener, ripped the top off the switch instead of pulling the switch out as it was supposed to. Because these little tabs that the switch opener grabs onto are like kind of delicate, not delicate, but they're just not robust enough. So sometimes if a switch gets stuck, you have to just punch it out the back, which is not great for the switch, but I think I'm gonna throw the switch out anyway because I don't know where the slider is. Well, it's gone. Good riddance. I'll have to replace that with something. Uh, maybe I'll put a, a linear switch down in like the bottom, bottom right corner or something he's not likely to press very often. Fact. Let me grab one. A cherry MX red. Ooh. Do I want to subject my friend to a cherry MX red? Do I have like a single switch that's already been lubed just sitting on something? Yeet. Yeah, that was a classic. It was a classic yeet. There is, um, the weird part about the keyboard multiverse, the keyboard aspect of your multiverse theorem is that the keyboard stuff comes back. It like comes back through a wormhole. Well, some things come back, some things don't. I've lost some things. I lost a whole bag of switches. I lost like $80 worth of switches. I don't know where they went. 80 cents each, 10, 100 switches, $80, gone. Just completely gone. I don't know where that is. Uh, I lost, yeah, where to, <laughs> but some things come back through the wormhole, like a spring that I lost 
N days ago. See my thumb in this board is just, in this glove is just flopping around everywhere. Blech. This is not a pleasant glove. Yeah, maybe okay, maybe. Or maybe there's like another passage that warps back. You know, maybe where maybe maybe there's like another dimension where people lose stuff in our universe. It's like some alien is doing some hobby or whatever the equivalent of socks are on like a non humanoid, non carbon based life form that's intelligent. And it has something like socks. And then we end up with them. What would that be? Yeah, exactly. Bag is gone. Keycap, gone. Well, I'll find it when I move out. It's got to be somewhere. It's got to be in a box somewhere. It's got to be in a bag somewhere. It's got to be behind a corner, behind a radiator. Yeah, I remember. My one-of-a-kind switch that's gone. Or my one-of-a-kind keycap that's gone. Yeah. That's cool. Oh yeah, Evie, there's a whole world of uh, handmade custom resin artisan keycaps where you don't even have to care about keyboards, you just care about these handmade resin artisan keycaps. And there's a whole like community of people who are into just the resin stuff. And like, they're also into custom keyboards or they're not even really that into custom keyboards and they just have like whatever keyboard, but they're super into the, res the, the artisan keycaps. People 3D print them too, but a lot of times they're cast out of resin. So that's that's a thing. Give me stuff caps lock. So that's a whole other rabbit hole you can dive into. And that can get expensive too. Especially if you're going secondhand aftermarket, you're trying to buy something collectible. Oof, good luck. Uh, EV people actually do 3D print whole keyboards. Um, check out. There's actually a vendor who sells them. Let me see if I can type this with gloves on. They make uh, uh, and sell 3D printed keyboard cases. There are others as well, but they're 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 pretty well known and they're they're good quality and good people as well. And actually, our friend, um, you know, good keyboards feel. You can do whatever you want. You can make the worst keyboard imaginable, and I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> Up to you. Beauty of a hobby, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I've been moving a little quickly. I should probably pause and reflect. Make sure everything's nice and level. All right, there we go. This one's a little bit off. Enough. Anyway, oh Jesse, so when you're uh, when you're building your keyboard, if you got one of these universal plates, it's not always easy to know where to put the uh, where to put the keycaps in or to where to put the switches in. But one thing you can do is you can put keycaps on them and then sit, set them in and then test them with the keycaps on to make sure that everything's aligned correctly. And there's nothing more annoying than building a keyboard, realizing you put two keycaps too close together or too far away, and then having to uh, uh, redo the bottom row. So definitely, definitely check. If you're not comfortable with it, uh, check 
by uh, installing keycaps. Before you solder, install the keycaps before you solder. Put the bottom row switches in and then pull the keycaps off and solder. Or even solder with the keycaps on if you're really not comfortable. I need better gloves. People have been like, oh, just get like nitrile work gloves. But like, that's what I had. If, oh man, uh, I don't know. Made keycaps, what profile would they be? Um, yeah. Oh, I just had a great realization. Ooh. I just realized that because I switched from a full backspace, uh, a split backspace to a full backspace, I'm gonna have one extra switch. I might not need this non-matching switch. If they made keycaps, good question. Pro honestly, probably DSA because, um, I don't know, it would either be DSA or Cherry Profile, Die Sub PBT, just because that's what like, quote unquote non-affiliated keyboard people tend to be aware of and tends to be easily available. P3D store. Okay, good to know. You know, they could all could also be like uh, cat, you know, cat profile or uh, that doesn't look right, is it? See this is off by this is off by a quarter of a unit. Please pull out cleaner. Selling things at ridiculous prices is certainly familiar to the keyboard hobby. Everybody's quite inured by now to just being juiced for money. And I mean, to be fair, again, it's, you know, manufacturing is expensive. Um, costs set up really quick. Once you've got vendors and you've got international shipping, uh, you know, everybody needs their cut. You know, reasonable, reasonable cut, not like, not like people being greedy. There are greedy people too. We kind of know who they are. Well, you don't always know who they are until they out themselves. Okay, let's check. Are there any switches that are have bent pins? Oh, looks good. Okay, yeah, we were... The one switch I killed turns out we didn't need because I changed the layout. Great. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Look at that. Come on. How is that? How is that mirror not cool? Hey, it's me. It's the camera again. That's so cool. Get these sweaty mittens off. All right. Now. The last step is to, well, the last required step is to solder the damn thing together. I'm about to do. Grab some, where'd my water go? Should I leave my water outside? Oh, it's over here. So one thing I gotta do is uh, I have a, this little soldering sponge here. I'm just gonna put some water on it. Just to dampen it and get water all over my desk mat. That's great. Don't drink lead water, kids. Okay. Got my soldering toys out. Take the scissors away. 
It's a rubber mat, a silicone mat, just to uh, actually really is a really mostly is a layer of protection against getting lead dust and stuff on my uh, cutting mat, which I really don't want to be poisonous. Um, lead is poisonous. There is no safe lead exposure. I'm exposing myself to it anyway. Okay, there's that. There's that. I got a bunch of stuff in the way. I'll do it later. A roll of lead. Okay. And on we go. Um, I'm going to turn on a fan. Let me know if this bothers people with the sound. what it's worth um the the fumes are not lead fumes they are just um the rosin flux evaporating or burning off nice shiny tip good we're tinned we're ready to go we're hot pretend we're ready to go so it's not it's not like poison it's just it really an irritant it gets really annoying after you know if you're not uh oh i have a full backs oh there it is But yeah, you definitely don't want to be breathing this stuff in too much. It can really irritate your lungs and your eyes and stuff. Your nose, mouth, etc. So, you know, with some keyboard builds, um, you're going to want to, you know, maybe solder a few switches in the corners and then do a few in the middle and just keep it all nice and flat. Um, you know, putting pressure on the, on the PCB, making sure that they're nice and flush with the plate. Um, in this particular keyboard, we don't really need to do that because the switches are so tightly gripped onto the PCB that we've already done the work of, of making sure everything's flush and, and level just just because everything's gripped so tightly together. So that saves us a little bit of effort in the actual soldering process and we can just kind of zip quickly through trusting that we've already done our alignment work. Piece of flux on the plate gets a lot better. Yeah, this is pretty clean solder. I probably won't even bother cleaning the flux off after. It's a black PCB, you won't even see it. I like to clean off flux when I desolder because I tend to add extra flux or I add, I add extra solder and there's no uh, pins. So it's just easier to get in there and scrub the, uh, extra, so the extra flux off. But when I'm building, I don't really care. It's not like corrosive anymore. I think historically, the, someone was telling me the flux used to be very acidic and it would corrode the uh, the finish and the it would corrode the PCB, but apparently that's not a thing anymore. You know, one thing that can happen when you're soldering these uh, PCB mounts with these with these switches in general is you can touch the soldering iron to the to the to the pin and uh, melt it. I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> I missed this one. Sort of like half looking down.
you know this gh60 pcb is pretty cool because um it has this like whole expansion module thing which i don't, honestly don't even know what that is this was uh the gh stands for geek hack and so for anybody who is um you know new to keyboards maybe you haven't used geek hack much or you know you're kind of oh yeah that's the place where all the group buys happen but geek hack used to be like you know before is before the subreddit i mean well actually the subreddit was made out of specifically out of a dispute between geek hack members and the subreddit was formed as a breakaway group from geek hack but uh geek uh, there you know a lot of early innovation in the western Amer in the you know american and european keyboard hobbies happened on geek hack and uh that's pretty cool. So this this was a I think it was to my knowledge the first or one of the but certainly the first open source sixty percent PCB. The whole idea of a sixty percent keyboard was you know new at one point and not too long ago either. A couple of years at the most you know five years six years. Um, so this was from twenty sixteen I think and this was community designed you know people wrote the firmware people somebody laid out laid everything out. Um, and it, it's just set a lot of standards. So this is a somewhat of a historical PCB. It actually says dedicated to the memory of Small Fry on it, who is, uh, I, I actually don't really know too much about Small Fry, but they were a uh, community member who uh, I, I guess passed away at some point. Um, before the uh, the GH60 was released, I don't know if they were involved with its development or they were just, uh, you know, a, a well-known community member. But it says it. Dedicated to the memory of Small Fry, Geekhack.org, programmable keyboard. You see the little uh, microcontroller. There's a lot of stuff on the solder mask here. There's like extra LED, extra. Resistors you can install, you can. It's just it's just I don't know, it just gives you a bunch of cool information about it. So it's, it's really it's a really nicely made PCB overall, open source hardware. There you go. You can get the files for this on on uh, GitHub. Oh yeah, I love those. I love those keyboards. The um, there's yours called the Romac R O M A C. Is that what it's called? Post a post a picture for uh, so Evie can see. Post uh, post one any any one of them. The the plaid I think was the original one. Then there's the gingham. Was the follow up. That's a, that's a fun one. That I think especially if you're new to keyboards and you're kind of still enthused with the whole idea of like PCBs, or if you're into electronics and you like just like looking at that stuff, or you're you know maybe into vintage computing or something like that where you know, and they use a lot of through-hole components. Um, that's uh, that's a, that's a fun one for sure. It's very handsome. I don't know what happened to Small Fry. But yeah, Chameleon, if you could if you could grab a photo of a built plaid while I'm soldering and post it in chat, that would be much appreciated so people could see it. I could also pull it up after on a I could like I could go online and show it on the screen, but we're getting a plaid, uh, gingham, acrylic discipline, I think is another one. That's actually made by my friend um Hoodrow Thrillson. Great username. Um There's again, there's, I think the I think you, well, your macro pads, one of them. There have been others. There have been ergo ones and, and straight and not ergo ones. And... It's a cool look. It's really clever. The ja you know, the Japanese keyboard community, uh, I think where that originally came out of, um, is extraordinarily creative, and extraordinarily innovative. And it's actually a real shame that 
I mean, the talent that like just the level of talent that these people have uh, and their time and dedication is really incredible. It's a, it's a shame that uh, as Westerners, either we we I mean, you know, people people are as talented as they are and, and people can only be what they are. But it's a shame that we don't even have access to it, really. Like it's all in Japanese. Uh, you know, the store, you can buy it online, but through only Japanese sites. Um, so it's kind of a shame. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of things in the West that they can't buy in Japan uh, from the keyboard hobby, but I want to give them my money. It's kind of hard to. There is actually a physical store. There you go, yeah. There's actually a physical keyboard store in uh, Tokyo, I believe, called Yusha Kobo. And I have lead all over my hands, so I'm going to do a bad thing and... and uh, That's actually a physical store in Japan where they sell some of these crazy keyboards. There's a there's a there's a physical keyboard store in Korea as well, owned by TX Keyboard. It's pretty cool to see. Should you buy a neuron slot? Um, I mean, do you want a forty percent keyboard? Like that's the real question first, right? Because it's it's not for everybody. Um, do you want a forty percent keyboard, or you know, do you want to spend that money? Because it's still what like three hundred three hundred plus dollars for a neuron. Um, you know, do you want a forty percent, or do you want to spend that money on you know trying to get a G zero zero slot? If you want, I mean, I think I think everybody should save their money for a G zero zero. You're dying for a neuron. Oh, do it, do it, do it. But yeah, yo, if you're in the market for a keyboard right now, wait, save your money. Try to get in on the G zero zero. You know, the people who own G zero zeros. Uh, the, the the gasket GSKT zero zero gasket I'm just gonna call it gasket double O the double O I'll just call it double O people who own them you know they say they're okay oh yeah it's not as good as this or that other fancy custom keyboard but if you've never owned a gasket mount keyboard or whatever but um, uh, it's gonna be better than most things you've probably tried and it's gonna be better than anything at that price point. This is the, oh, let me post, let me post the Geek Hack link. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I did the wrong one. That is the uh, GSKT00. Okay, we're actually done soldering. Um, we're done. All right, let me let me slap a USB cable on this and uh, see if it's working. I had a nice long USB cable. Where'd that go? Let's plug this guy and just test it, make sure I soldered everything correctly. Oh, Evie, yeah, Korea is the home of the uh, of keyboards, really. Oh, not home, keyboards, custom keyboards. Like high-end, fancy custom keyboards. The first ones ever were, were made in Korea on a, a Korean forum called On The Desk or otd.kr. So if actually you speak Korean, um, there's still quite a lively keyboard community in Korea and uh, on Korean language sites where uh, it definitely is a good place to check out, especially if you speak Korean. So there's uh, OTD and KBD Lab, Keyboard Lab. Let me see if I can get this on screen so you guys can see what I'm doing.
Can I have some more rice? Seems extremely important though, so. Let me see, window capture, see if this works. Does it work? Huh. That's a blank white box. We don't want that. Hmm. Oh, I know what the problem is. Ah, that sucks. All right, we're just gonna do my desktop. So this is a website where you can uh, test if all your uh, buttons are working right. Good. Did I forget to solder this too? Uh oh. Okay, so two of the switches aren't working. We'll have to see what's up with that. function key so that should be what in the world okay well that's something okay I gotta reprogram some things but uh, that's all working the tab key and the Q key aren't working and the question is why question is why so I'm not actually sure why let me um, sorry I'm messing with something on my computer I shouldn't be messing with okay so let's unplug this for now let's get the multimeter out because uh, hopefully hopefully because the switch seems soldered but the first thing you do want to try is, um, I did leave the soldering iron hot. So the first thing I'm going to try is just reflowing the switch. But the fact that it's two of them makes me suspect it's not the soldering job that's bad. Let me bust out the multi here. Wouldn't be a keyboard stream if it wasn't a little scuffed yet. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm just cursed. Every stream, there's something wrong. So in case nobody knows what this is, this is like an all-purpose electrical testing tool. And we can test continuity, electrical continuity. So if I switch it together, right? Um, it beeps when I know this, it, there's made electrical contacts. So what we do is we put the, the contacts on two, both ends of the switch and press the switch, and it should beep. And that's how we know that the switch itself is, is making electrical contact correctly. But I need to do this. It's really annoying to do it with only two hands. Hmm. Let's try it on one that I know works. Okay. Okay, this switch is not working. And this switch is not working. Hmm. Why did it work on this one? Maybe I'm maybe I'm holding it wrong now. Okay. This is very hard to do. Not gonna lie. Oh, it's working, but it's showing 200 ohms of resistance. That's not right. 
Okay, so something is wrong with these two switches. I need to take them out. <laughs> Just got to drag the stream on longer. That's all. God, it's 9 o'clock. Have I been streaming for... Oh my god, almost... Jeez. This was supposed to be a short stream. This is a solder sucker. It sucks solder. Because I'm not testing the pads, the problem is, is the uh, the switch itself isn't making contact internally. In fact, let me let me check with pliers. That's a really good uh, really good point. Before I proceed, I'm make sure the pad works by shorting it with uh, pliers. That's a really good idea. Thank you. The switch itself does not work. Okay, good. So it might be, I don't know why the switch itself wouldn't make that, but something is off. All right, I gotta test this diode. Maybe a diode's bad. Oh boy. Again, let me check, just make sure it's working on a working diode. Oh, that, I think it's the other way around. Can't get it. I can't get it to go on a working diode. There we go. That's a working diode, getting half a volt. Hmm. Okay, that's a working diode, half a volt. That is a working diode, half a volt. That is a working diode. That is. A working diode. That's a working diode. Huh. Some flux left over there. So what I need to do now is figure out why the electrical connection Why the electrical connection isn't happening on these two switches? Now, this is what I get for not testing my PCB. Normally, normally I'm like, oh, I desoldered it, it's fine. Hmm. I may need to jump a pad. All right, we gotta start checking for, uh, see where the continuity is. So, uh, without getting into too much detail, the keyboard works with like a matrix of connections between the different pads. And so if one, one connection breaks in one switch it can break it in multiple switches and then it's a matter of figuring out where things run so the fact that they're in a row suggests that the connection is broken between rows these are connected these row this row is connected aha yep okay i found the bad connection already i think yeah so that's going across the row Diodes, right? Where's that connect to? What the hell? There's a via and then two connections. What in the world? Sorry, I'm not talking. I'm, I'm actually trying to uh, make sure this is just. Make sure that I am. Uh, Okay, good. Should sure I understand the layout of this thing here? Yeah, okay, good. It also helps that keyboards tend to be pretty um, regular in the way they're laid out, so you can guess, you can infer. Okay. Yeah, 
that's not that's that's not good. All right, I, I gotta jump the pad. Box full of jumper wires here. Haven't done me wrong yet. All right, all right, all right. So I'm glad I desoldered that. Uh, the question now is will it work? I'm not going to solder it yet. I'm going to pull up the tester configurator thing. Yeah, it's possible that when I desoldered it, I killed a pad. And I um, didn't realize, or I was, you know, this is why you test your keyboard. This is why you're supposed to test your keyboard before you solder, honestly. It's a classic just cocky, I don't want to say a newbie mistake, just like a cocky builder mistake. Like, oh yeah, I don't need to test my PCB. I desoldered it without a problem. But, you know, so let me plug this in. Okay. That. Okay, that works. W works. So if I bridge these together and then press the key, yep, 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 that fixes it. Okay, so I'd have to solder a jumper wire on. Let me show you guys what happened. So, this pad is supposed to be connected to this pad. It's very likely that when I desolder this, part of this pad get ripped off. Um, the connection is actually on the back side of the PCB. So, if I ripped off part of the pad that's on the back side of the PCB, then the wire between the two pads isn't touching the pad anymore. So all I have to do is just jump from this pad to this pad basically replacing that connection that I destroyed. So no, there wasn't an issue before I took it apart. I likely caused this problem when I was desoldering uh, by either just going too quickly or uh, being rough on the board. Now these jumpers aren't, you know, they're, they're, they, can be, they can be removed, but it does make desoldering in the future a little more annoying. So it's just, you don't want to do this a lot. <laughs> um, but you know, sometimes it happens, especially with a with a PCB that's been desoldered a couple times already. So what I'm doing is I'm just I actually want to clip the end. This is a little bit too long. I'm gonna cut the ends of this wire a little bit. Just so we don't have like little bits of wire, something that can shorten the inside of a metal case if someone No, it's not a metal case, but still. You know. Just want to do a good job. Let me first solder in the other one, the other one that's working just fine. Okay. There's that. Now let's lay this down. What I'm going to do is actually, this, this joint already has solder in it, so all I'm going to do is uh, switch my left hand and uh, just reflow this. Just tack it on there. So with the solder is melted, now I take the soldering iron away. The soldering the solder is going to cool and hold the wire in place. And now what I have to do is do the same thing on the other side. So let me get some solder on there. Okay. So I only have two hands. Now there is a way to do it. With, it's just it's just easier to do it this way. Now I melt the solder, reflow, take the soldering iron away, and now the solder. Oh, unless you don't touch the solder. And it cools and should. Yeah, there you go. Now it's holding the wire in place, and I'm just going to add a little more solder just to uh, keep everything together. Tweezers for this. There we go. Do the same thing on the other one. Okay. 
It's enough solder that everything's going to stay together. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be experiencing any bending stress or, or twisting or, or you know, a whole lot of excessive vibration. So. Should be good enough, you know, good enough for a non, like, mechanical. Well, I really need to clean my solder sucker. Like a non-mechanical, oh, why is that in here? There's my oil that I was looking for. Whoops. It's really absent-minded, I guess. The reason I had the trash can is because the, uh, the solder sucker ejects the lead that it sucks out of the, um, the PCB, and you don't want that in your apartment. So now I should be able to plug this in. And it should work fine. Tab, Q, W, E, R. Yeah, we're good. All right, we're good. We're actually done now. Nice. Thank you, little wires. Haven't failed me yet. Okay, I'm going to clean the flux off. Oh, yeah, we get to, All right, we're going to wrap this up with some fun. Um, so, again, this keyboard... Well, let me let me clean up. I'll talk while I'm cleaning up. This keyboard is not a gasket mounted keyboard or anything like that. Yeah, we'll get close ups. Oh, the of the finished the jumper? Sure. It's a really ugly job, but sure. So this keyboard is obviously not a gasket mounted keyboard. Um, but like I said at the beginning of the stream, uh, I I figured out a way to make it effectively gasket mounted. Um, and you know, people ask, well, why would you ever want a gasket mounted keyboard? Why would you just mount it onto the case? And that's because it changes the vibration characteristics, basically. It um, makes it, makes a better, it, one of two things can happen. Either it absorbs vibration from the plate or it makes a better seal like a gasket would uh, between the plate and the piece and the, the case. And that can actually transfer vibration better into the case. So you get a more, can not always can get a more like coherent resonant resonance out of the case um, or it can dampen the sound of the plate and it can also dampen the feel giving it a softer bottom out so the plate's basically riding on a shock absorber um, and it just heavily depends all depends on how stiff the gasket is etc shut that off now No, let me actually go wash my hands. Oh, I'll actually show you the wire here. It's literally just a wire between two of the pads replacing the uh, connection that used to be in the PCB. Be right back. Oh man, it just smells like, uh, thank you, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it, uh, it really smells like hot flux in here, it's kind of gross, <laughs> uh, it's like coming, coming out, and, uh, is there no lamp? I can get the lamp, I'll get the lamp after, let me, let me, let me finish the, uh, keyboard stuff, I'll get the lamp at the end, so we gotta stick around for the lamp. So, to recap, or for anyone who missed the beginning, this is a piece of wood that somebody routed 
out by hand. Uh, and they put these little inserts in. All right, all right. The people want their lamp. They'll get their lamp just at the end. Uh, so normally, this assembles by just doing that. Putting the screws in. Let's just do it. Fine. Let's just, let's just go for it. Let's assemble it. I will show you uh, how it goes. And then we can disassemble it and we will try it again with the uh, gasket. And so, you know, again, when this gasket stuff was all going crazy, I, um, by the way, for anyone who was asking about how the plate looks, uh, this is why you do it as a mirror because even with keycaps on, you've got this nice border and it's like this really cool mirror metallic border. I don't remember who was asking about that. Ugh, piece of lead dust. Not for me. Did I? Am I out of Kim wipes? Oh, got one left. I have another box down there. I got to get it. Anyway, so um, this is which again, this is what you might call a, uh, a bottom mount because the the uh, plate mounts to the bottom of the case. There is no top half of the case, so it doesn't really matter, but this is you know comparable in feel to any other bottom mount keyboards, like which there aren't many of, to be honest. Uh, the Jer Mini is probably one of them. Sandwich mount basically feels like bottom mount, though, because sandwich mount would be the top half of the case. Puts pressure on top of the plate, which uh, maybe there's some kind of subtle difference, probably maybe mostly in, this, in terms of sound. These, also, these these screw uh, threads are not that great. A little tight, a little stiff. Okay, so let's throw some caps in this bad boy and uh, see how it sounds. I'm gonna have to get a back face key. So uh, what else is there to know about this other than I'm while I'm putting caps up while I'm putting caps on it. Um, again, so the plate is steel. Steel is very stiff. It will not like this won't flex at all if I press on it. It just will not flex. Maybe uh, like a little bit. Actually, actually, it's yeah, it's flexing. Okay, it's it's got some flex to it, but it's it's stiffer than aluminum. And so a lot of people tend to. Um, not like steel because it can sound very plinky and very loud. Um, it tends to carry a lot of vibration through it. And so it can be somewhat of a harsh, loud typing experience. And it's really fallen out of favor in the custom keyboard community and particularly in the last two years. Um, but, uh, ZXC. But um, this is steel, you know, it is what it is. This is one of a kind. I could get another one made. I could measure it and make my own, but uh, like, why bother? Um, let me see, oh yeah, I had a, let's do it that way. These are vintage keycaps, so they don't have all, they don't have like, you know, I'm using arrow keys because these are vintage caps and there's only so many caps that are on the, these are, so these, are, these keycaps are from like 1993 or something like that. I don't know. They're pretty old. They're probably older than a lot of uh, many, many keyboard enthusiasts. So what was I saying? Um, so yeah, so I, uh, being a little afraid of steel at the time, particularly at the time, I decided let me put silent switches in it. And I actually think silent switches are excellent on steel um, because silent switches can be uh, almost the opposite where it's like disconcertingly soft. Oh yeah, he wanted tilde and escape is gonna be down in a weird spot, right? Uh, the silent switches can be disconcertingly soft and quiet. So the extra stiffness and sort of boing of steel um, helps offset and it gives you this nice, really thumpy experience. Now, I don't have a desk mat, so you're hearing a lot of, oops, what am I doing? You're hearing a lot of uh, uh, you know, desk noise transferring 
Um, I like to type on a desk mat, if only just because it improves the sound quite a bit. I don't really know the physics of exactly why. I could probably speculate on it, but I'm a little tired, so my like super creative brain is not working at full capacity. Oh, I don't need that cap lock actually from another set. Yeah, but I'll put that away. I don't need the escape key. I have to get more caps out of this set. Here's my other control key. Don't need that. So uh, yeah, this 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 just works really well. I, I feel like if I put a non, <coughs> if I put a non silent switch in this board, this would be extremely loud and like clank 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 when I typed on it, and I, I just don't like that. That's not appealing to me. Um, but with the silent switches, it's perfect. So you know, a lot of keyboard building for me it takes a lot of experimentation. And this is where the value of just trying things, listening to other people's sound tests, building a lot of keyboards, which I, is not something everybody can do. Where's my end key? Did I drop it? Okay. Where's my end key? So I'm look, I needed to get the uh, caps lock in the backspace, but I'm looking for my N key, which seems to be missing. I'm, I mean, it was there when I took it off. Oh, there's two delete. Oh, this is not from that set, okay. Hmm. Did I lose the N key? I mean, it's funny, these vintage keycaps are not terribly valuable. There's, they're kind of, they're not a dime a dozen, but they're not super expensive. But at the same time, I don't want to lose anything. Huh. I lost a key. Okay. That's a bummer. Well, I'm going to just put another keycap on there for now, because I really don't know um, the delete keys, because the key's been deleted. Now I'll put the one key, because I'm number one. So I don't know where my end key went. <laughs> scuff. Just it's all, it, something's always scuffed. But uh, yeah, it's in the other universe. I'll find it, I guess. Weird. Weird. I have a lot. Of, I tore a lot of a lot of things around uh, apart for this audio experimentation I've been doing. So it's it's hopefully it's not fully uh, crossed over into the other universe, and I'll be able to find it. figure out where that delete key came from too. I thought it was from this set, but evidently not. So here it is. Here's the finished build. Here's the maple bar with vintage cherry uh, double shot keycaps. These keycaps are from a vintage cherry keyboard, probably from the early 90s or mid 90s. They are double shot, meaning that there is another 
there are two layers of plastic. One layer of plastic forms both text and the other forms the body of the keycap. So the legends will never wear off ever because it's right through the, the, the keycap. Yeah, if you fly, <laughs> if you watch the VOD and you see me just flinging the end key somewhere, then great. Oh, I found it. Yes. Haha. <laughs> I did drop it. It's on the floor. I probably dropped it before the stream, though. I don't think I dropped it while I was in the stream. Nice. Blessed moment in keyboard. Yeah, isn't that hot? Told you. You can totally see it. Uh, this is absolutely worth it. If that was, this wasn't polished, so this keyboard would be such a whatever looking thing, but look at that. Oh man, that is pretty. And it's so it's so nice too. Like this wood. Look at that. I actually would love some feet to give it a slight angle like that. But um, I could. I think I have some somewhere. I don't have any double stick tape though. I think my roommate does. In his wood, in his tool box. Actually, I'll just use a roll of tape. Permanent double-sided tape. No shit. Hang on. All right, we'll try it. With, we'll try it flat on the desk first because it changes the sound. Sorry. Right. Here it is. No desk mat. Yeah, the wood could be polished or uh, stained or something like that. Would be nice if I if it had some kind of like uh, 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 sort of a shiny finish instead of a uh, uh, you know, sort of matte clear finish. So you hear how, first of all, the tactility, you know, inside the switch, it's making some metallic noises. That's kind of just to be expected. Any pinging, crunching, and grinding from the spring has gone away because we've lubed them. And the wood just gives it this, oh man, I mean, can you hear this? Here, let me angle my microphone down so you can hear it a little better. Shift key's a little cockeyed. I have to go back and fix the shift key. I'll do that off stream. See, here's a... The shift key's not straight. I gotta fix that. Yes, you can use bigger bump ons in the back. That's another... Bump ons. Bump ons in the back. That's another thing you can do. In fact, I might have actually... Hang on a second. I happen to have... Mega bump ons. Bump on. Bump ons. Let's try it. Why not? I'll try them after though, because I want to. The, the on desk sound is different. So here's like. When you lift it up off the desk, the whole bottom can now resonate. Totally changing the sound character. I kind of like it with the dampened bottom. But uh, you might be able to put some foam inside the case. I'll have to experiment more. I have some foam, actually. We can try that in a second. So I have a desk mat around here. My office is uncharacteristically messy. It used to be very messy. Now it's very clean. But it's not very clean right now because I tore everything apart for this audio experimentation. Where did I put my little Here it is. desk mat? So normally, I type with a desk mat. Um, Again, just softens up the feel a little bit and uh, changes I, I changes the sound for the better. So here it is with the desk mat. So it's a little more refined. The desk isn't really in the sound of your desk isn't involved so much. Right? That the whole desk kind of vibrates. 
And this way, you get a bit of more of a just the richness of the keyboard, a little less of the desk. You know, it's funny. They sound super tactile. They're not mega tactile. They're these are like a medium. They're like about about as tactile as less probably less tactile than an MX Clear. Maybe about the same. So, uh, Ch Chameleon, I know you're familiar with my Duck Sidewinder. Imagine that, but with the bump is uh, rounder instead of sharp. I love this keyboard. I really like this keyboard. Whew. Films and lube make such films and lubing the springs makes such a big difference, especially if the switches are already uh, smooth enough where you don't need to lube them to make them feel good. Like, oh man, my friend's gonna like this at work. All right, now let's try it. I'm not gonna stick. Actually, I can stick the mod. Yeah, you know what? Let's just leave the desk mat down because that's kind of the preferred. Yeah, I'll I'll, gra I'll grab some foam and try it inside at the end. Um, I don't think it needs the foam now. Like while it's flat on the table, it definitely doesn't need the foam. It's got just the right amount of quiet versus thock for me. But we can try it. I'm putting these down at the back to give it only a little elevation. You know, if, uh, because of science, if I move them. Further in, it'll give it more elevation. I guess I can move them up, up a touch. This is fine. Just a, it needs a, just a hint of elevation, especially with these keycaps. Um, they definitely work best on like a slightly angled keyboard. So here we go. We've got a little more elevation. So now the sound is like open and less. I, I, I can't even emulate it now. I guess I can put it back on there. <laughs> Listen to it without the headphones just so I can hear. And then with that. Yeah, it's funny. It, I guess it sounds basically the same. It's just maybe a little quieter because you have less of the desk involved. Um, you know, I'll leave this up to, I think the typing feel is a little better with this little bit of elevation. Oh, he wanted the, the space bar flipped around, I think. Some people like the flip space bar. So some people some people like to flip their space bars around. I think I don't like it personally, but no, he doesn't have a desk mat. Um, it's, all right, fine. Let's see without the desk mat. Ah. Try with some foam. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to gasket it. No wonder. Okay. All right. All right. It gets better. It gets better, folks. So. So. What we can do is we can take some of these rubber strips that I cut like a year ago, mm, ten months ago now, almost a year ago. Oops. And we can put them in between the plate and the case. Um, for Actually, in this case, very likely better mechanical connection between the two parts, which should, in theory, uh, change the tactile bump a little bit by dampening out some of the vibration, but it should also change the sound, in theory, a little bit. And I, as I remember when I was doing this testing, on this keyboard in particular, it was a very subtle effect, so we might not even notice, especially through the microphone. Four hours, four hours and 15 minutes of content. Thank you guys for sticking with me all this time. Do uh, follow on Twitch if you are interested in this and want to drop back in next time I'm live. If you follow, you get notifications. See when I'm live. I, I've started also posting uh, on Instagram. And then I have a notification. I'll link my Instagram later. So now. Let's see, I remember these were like sized just so. It's a little long, there we go. This was for this piece. This was for this, actually it doesn't, shouldn't matter. Oh. oh, this was for the edge, okay. 
And this is for there. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't know if the width of the, of the, I don't know if this is for this piece. This can go anywhere. And this can go anywhere. Now we do the same thing. Just go back together. See, Evie, thanks for dropping in. Whoops. Now, the one trick is when you're installing this, you don't want to knock the these strips out of alignment. It's a little annoying. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, I kicked one in yep that's good okay now we screw it back together um, in terms of now now you now have to think about how much you're compressing the rubber right I'm just gonna screw it until it's basically past finger tight it's like there it's fine you know, the more you the, the more you tighten it The, uh, the more rubber, the more the rubber is compressed, and the less dampening it does, and the more of like a vibration transfer it does. So you know when when uh, you know a, a group like uh, Key Cult is doing their 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 keyboard design, they're thinking about you know how much. How do I design the case such that it you know attains the the level of compression that we want it to attain? Um, and that's the kind of sort of thinking and, and effort that goes into a higher end keyboard. So these aren't perfectly aligned, but it kind of does. Ooh, I kind of screwed that up. Okay. Almost messed that up. It kind of doesn't matter if they're perfectly aligned, as long as they're all sort of evenly underneath the plate, which they all seem to be. Yeah, nine hundred dollar key cult. What's crazy about the key cult is that it's actually that price retail. It's like eight hundred dollars retail or something. Um, you know, you're paying for a lot of things either way. Oh man. So this doesn't add a ton of flex. Key cult is a gasket mount keyboard, actually. Probably it was probably Teha, honestly. He's been people have been sending him key cults to build. Cool. Okay. So now that actually helped recover some of the, the thock that we lost by elevating the keyboard. You know, I almost don't know if it needs the gaskets anymore. I actually, it, it sucks some of the life out of the tactility, I think. You get more of an even sound across the board. Probably get more of an even feel across the board. Um, it actually does make the tactility a little bit less lively. And it, and be, I don't know. I'll probably keep it as gasket just because it's so weird. But I don't think this design, with these switches in particular, I don't know if they, I mean, they never really did, but they don't particularly benefit from the gasket. And now that it's elevated off the desk, let me try it. Let me try it with a desk mat. This is with gasket and the de desk mat. Yeah, it actually, interesting. I don't know, do you guys notice a difference? Like, it almost, I feel like it almost sucks some of the energy out of it. Let me try pulling these off. You can always stick them back on or use double stick tape to put them back on. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, you know, it's funny in high, like, it really doesn't need the gasket at all. In fact, it might be too soft with the gasket. But uh, yeah, I'll put these back on. Hopefully they stick. Nice, these are pretty sticky. It doesn't move anywhere. 
So, you know, I'll leave it up to uh, my, my friend who I built this for. I'll leave it up to him to decide whether he wants the gasket or not. We can try it both ways and he'll ultimately see what he likes. But there's definitely a difference. You're definitely hearing more of the metal sound coming through and less thock. It's definitely been dampened. Yeah, I added the gasket between the plate. So, oh yeah, here, let me show you. So now there's these rubber strips again back between the plate and the case. And I think what that did is it really, it really, um, dampened the sound coming from the case and now you're just hearing the switch. Uh, for, for future reference, this is 50 or 60, 60 duro, uh, six shore A is the measurement, 60 A hardness neoprene rubber. Um, I, so I don't know if other, you know, other gas, other gasket implementation uses other materials called poron, um, these harder, softer, softer gaskets, uh, more compression, less compression. You know, so it's, it's, uh, well, I experiment with it some more, but I, yeah, I'll leave it as is just because it's so weird, but, uh, very likely I will end up taking the gaskets out back out of this. So something to note, depending on the kind of switches you like. Yeah, without the gasket, I think th without the gasket, you get more of, you know why? Here's the deal. Wood sounds great, whereas aluminum sounds terrible. So if you gasket mount a wood keyboard, hang on one second. Thank you. <laughs> Just, I Brought me snacks. The beverage of champions, plain seltzer. Um, my beloved deli gave me the wrong thing. Very sad. Whatever, I'll still eat it. All right, so mm. this is a seltzer review stream now. No mouth noises for you guys, though. So yeah, so. Yeah, so here's the deal. Wood sounds great when it resonates. That's a nice sound. Aluminum, when it resonates, and brass sound terrible. Nobody likes that. So, gasket in an aluminum keyboard, like actually like our unicorn here, helps smooth that out. The wood the gasket is actually taking away the sound of the case. So I'll take the gaskets out, actually. I will take the gaskets out. That's likely what's going That's my guess as to what's going on. And so you're just sucking the life out of it. And then you're just left hearing these clicky silent switches, which are just kind of whatever. So, okay, I'll take the gasket out. I'll leave the feet on because uh, I think the angle just feels better, even if the sound is a little worse. And... Um, I'm not gonna bother with with the foam inside the case. It doesn't need it. Uh, if you know, if he wants it to be library quiet, maybe I can add the foam in. But it doesn't really need it. So uh, actually, you know what? No, no, no. Because I put the bump on. I'll do the foam. Let's try the foam. That's one more thing. One more thing. What the heck? And I'll take the gasket out too. While I'm here, I'll take the gasket out. What did I get? I got a. I wanted to get plantain chips. They gave me cassava chips, and I got a a diet ginger ale and a plain seltzer. The most, the whitest, most boring snacks in the world. Four hours, 24 minutes. This is, we are well past my uh, expected two and a half hour stream mark, but uh, we had some delays along the way, and those delays led to discussions. Those discussions, I hope, were enlightening to everybody else because they were certainly enlightening to me working through some of the issues we had um well not the audio issues that just that was just frustrating bah. we're good just pull the keycap off so all right gasket rubber gasket material i will probably just throw you in the trash now let me get some uh, rubber for the inside of that
this, I found a sheet of sorbethane. This is specifically designed to absorb sound. So we're going to try some of that too. Long day, but productive. Perfect. So this is specifically sound dampening material. It just does not like transfer sound vibration at all. In fact, my uh, uh, tripod at my desk is uh, sit resting on, on some sort of thing, sheets. You know what I can do later is I can, um, you know, edit, go back and edit the video and put all the typing samples right next to each other, or at least add timestamps. Uh, it'll be easier to hear. This this screw thread is extremely problematic. I'm not even going to screw that in. I'm not even going to screw that. That that. Screw hole is dead to me. Shit. Well, that's a bummer. That's gonna change the sound for the worse. Probably the feel as well. Ooh, maybe it's a screw. Oh. I I don't know if there's a way to safely remove. I don't know if there's a way to like remove one of these inserts and replace it. Um. I don't know if it was wood glued in or what, but this, yeah, this is this is scary. I'm, I'm not screwing anything into that. That is damaged. It was it was always damaged, but now it's it's acting in a way that I don't trust it. So we're gonna have to live with that. Um, uh, oh wow, that is just silent. The sorbet thing just eats all of the damn all of the noise. So now the wood isn't here. I guess it's still doing that, but interesting. So it raises, you can still knock on it, but that really sucks a lot of energy out of it. So I don't like that. That's too dampened, too dampened for me. I also, you know, it's filling the space. It's doing two things. It's diffuse, it's absorbing and diffusing the energy from vibrate from the keyboard vibrating. But it's also filling the space, so there's less of like a resonant chamber underneath the PCB. Um, and both of those things will definitely change the sound. Theoretically, having less resonant space um, should, you know, I guess change the bass response. I, I actually took a loudspeaker design course. I just don't really remember much of the principles I learned. I didn't really teach us that much, to be honest. So where I'm taking the sort of thing out, I know I probably know what I'm putting this in. Probably putting in my IDV, IDV60, and regular neoprene sheeting going in. My scissors. Doesn't need to be a perfect fit, but oh, I get it kind of close. Stuff's pretty easy to cut, fortunately. This is like the crazy and keyboard modding here. This is really not what most people do. I guess not. People people do dampening material and keyboards. It's not a weird thing. In fact, I could double this up. If I really, I, I might try, try doing two layers. That would be fun as well. Because then that's actually me pressing up against the PCB. Screws, screws, screws. I would like a keyboard that I don't have to screw together, that like clamps together. So I don't have to deal with bad screw threads, I don't have to deal with bad screws. Like a, like a, like one of those buckles, like on a, like on a guitar case actually. 
for like luggage. Yikes, that screw thread is on its way out too. It'll be like a really crazy industrial looking thing where you've got like clamps like, <laughs> like, a, like clamping the plate down. Yeah. That'd be pretty funny. That'd be a cool look. That'd be a fun thing to design. A piece of wood like this. This is with the generic neoprene. Oh yeah. You still get a lot of that wood thock. I don't know if it makes a difference at all versus just without it. Man, I think I really just don't, I don't like how the bump outs make it sound at all. It really needs to be planted on the table. All right, I'll have to leave them on. Let me let me try it on the end of the the end of the table, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't need. It does, definitely does not need that dampening material inside. I think it benefits from having that resonant cavity in there. And I think this is something that keyboard designers do think about when they're designing keyboards, like the sound of their keyboard. Um, matters to a lot of people. I mean, that's why I'm sitting here doing typing tests, right? So much of keyboards is about the sound of the keyboard um, in addition to the feel. And then, you know, it's like eating, right? If your food looks appetizing, it tastes better. It, it's all part of the, the, the psychological experience of enjoying your keyboard is multiple aspects to it. And I, I believe that the sound is part of that. If you close your ears and type, it's just not as it's just not as satisfying. I guess I can try it like this, right? Here, yeah, that's actually a good idea. Here. Do a more side by side comparison. So here it is with the with the neoprene in it. Let me push down so I get some uh, pressure between the plate and the case. Yeah, a buckle keyboard with some cool like gold brass hardware. Okay. That's how that sounds. Take this out. Oh yeah. You get more of that wood. A little bit more of the woody sound. So let's, let's leave this out. Let's leave this stuff out. Let it resonate. And I think we're done with the build. Feel ultimately does have to trump sound for me. Therefore, I will defer to the slightly angled version because ultimately it has to feel good if you're typing on it all day at work. Um, again, I will poll my friend uh, with it both ways and see which one he prefers. But we're gonna do it like this for now. But yeah, this is why you know a, a lot of angled keyboards are, uh, it's a wedge on the bottom of the case. Oh, it, it didn't really affect the sound. It just sounded like a knocking on a piece of wood. Yes, yeah, so this is why a lot of high-end keyboards, you know, the angle's fixed and it's a wedge. Um, that 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 sort of even contact with the table, uh, or really even contact with your desk mat. You really should be typing on a desk mat if you do value sound, and it helps to feel a little bit. Um, that really changes things. Versus just these two points of contact. I guess it's like a speaker, right? Uh, it's exactly the opposite reason of why we put a speaker on those little tiny cones, because we want the speaker to resonate with the table as little as possible, or your speaker stand, or whatever. Whereas a keyboard, you are benefiting in this case from the added resonance of the table, desk, or whatever. So I'm happy with this. I can do a, I can do a formal typing test. All right, I'll do I'll do a typing test with like I gotta plug it in. You can see how it sounds in more you know extended use. Oh yeah, I would use this at work, yeah. Okay, let me do, do we wanna see just speed typing? No, we don't wanna see that. We wanna see some, uh, I like to go to typingtest.com. Thanks for stopping in, Jesse. Really appreciate the uh, chatting. 
Appreciate the hanging out. Yeah, let's uh let's get a local meetup going. All right. One minute typing test. Let's go. Let's see. Okay, 105 words a minute. Oh, 36 missed. What? 36 mistyped words? I might have had, must have had something, uh, something messed up there. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to show you the result of that. Um, yeah, there it is. There's the keyboard. It's been built. Am I stream buffering? Am I stream buffering for everybody else? What are you doing? Anyway, it's the end of the stream. Hopefully, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, it's not buffering anymore. Hopefully, you guys liked how it sounded. I hopefully you guys had a fun time on the stream. Um, thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Anybody who joined late, anybody who's been here the whole time, um, anybody who had me on in the background while you're cleaning, doing laundry, doing dishes, doing your homework. Um, it's been fun. I learned a lot of stuff. Um, hope you guys learned some things. And now I am going to go see if somebody else is streaming so I can raid them. Let's see. I know, I assume Teho Types is done. Um, Chubies was streaming. Chubies is live. What's he up to? Unboxings. And modding a real force. Ooh, yeah. Topra stuff. All right, guys. Everybody have a great night. Thanks again. And, uh, have fun with Chewies. Eight seconds. All right, everybody. Good night.